Alright, welcome back, folks. Previously on Like a Dragon Guide End. Did you finally confront our mystery man, Nishitani the uh, Third, after being informed of his, I guess, role in the whole bigger plan? So, Sudano informs Kiryu that in order for the dissolution plan that Daigo and Watase collaborated on that's imminent, there's one person that would most definitely challenge Watase and in, in the be in disagreement, right? And it would be uh, Nishitani Omura. Omoro. Uh, Omoro, uh, Omoro is uh, just by namesake, so we don't actually ever figure out or get introduced to his name. It ended up having, you know, you storm the castle, fisticuffs, then you in spectacular agent faction, uh, agent fashion. Gideo grappled his way, tumbled his way, kicked his way out of the castle. Um, and proposed a second plan to try to get Nishitani out of the castle. Because the castle is incredibly fortified, it's his home and whatnot. So it was a really, really uh, charming uh, section where Kiryu ask uh, Sudano to round up 50 million yen. Well, he eventually scrounged up 50 million yen and they partied hard for one night and brought uh, Shishido along the way. It was pretty, it was fantastic. You know, just a bunch of guys living it up for once in a life that more or less is life and death every, every moment, right? So, eventually, it kind of caught his attention, Nishitani, so Nishitani ends up coming back on shore, uh, but he stayed in hiding. He sent his uh, captain, which I don't think we ever got his name. We might have. It, it was at the golf center. Backed up with Shishiro, uh, hit him up, then found... Uh, found that they need to uh, make an alternative move to get Nishitani's uh, location. So instead, uh, Kiryu went back to the castle and took over with his posse in tow, which was pretty epic. I mean, you gotta get that uh, full storm down the gates. Um, definitely fan service, Max. Um, Eventually, Nishitani uh, challenges Kiryu, so they head off to what look like the docks, you know, somewhere in the docks area, uh, adjacent to like the shipyard area, and then led to a confrontation, which took me by surprise, really. I kind of thought there is a potential that Suruno and Shishiro would betray, or kind of momentarily um, con uh, be in a conflict of interest with Kiryu because Kiryu is constantly upholding an honor code and while being compassionate a lot of times and it tends to be a conflict of interest with a lot of people so that moment when he more or less strong arm Shishido to picking up Nishitani and taking him out of the burning building and then uh, Shishido convinced Kiryu to go first at first I thought wait a minute and turns out it, it ended up being a betrayal of trust uh, a little bit uh, what happened was that Shishido ends up stabbing Nishitani on the on the floor uh, when, when he was knocked out after the confrontation. So they leave, and then there was a little bit of backstory about Nishitani, and here's where it gets a little interesting. 
So apparently, Nishitani is pretty much a sadistic person. Now, knowing that this game was written by Furuta, right? Uh, and Furuta's two previous most recent writing projects were Judgment and Lost Judgment. It does seem that it has Furuta written all over it, where they introduce a character that's a center pin as an antagonist, right? And there are a lot of antagonists, but more so anti-heroes. And then there's Nishitani, which kind of echoes Soma and Kuroiwa, but not at the level of uh, uh, Sadamoto, right? Sadamoto, we're not sure. It, it's kind of hinting at Nishitan, uh, Nishitani, the current Nishitani the third, is have a he long history of atrocities, which may place him at Sadamoto. It's kind of a shame that, uh, I mean, I get the whole brisk and moving the plot forward. Uh, what I wanted to say, which was I was going to reserve to the closing remark, was that this, this game feels like a John Wick, and it will appeal to that specific part of the legacy community. And I would say it's the majority legacy community. Like 60, 70, even 80% of the legacy community would like this type of format. John Wick. Fast, brisk. Cut a bit of the backstory. Let's not watch actions of atrocity or like mellows of redemption or redeemable quality, but yet misguided. That kind of stuff. It's at that slow burn, right? And uh, what I could attempt. So it's less of a drama, like Judgment, Lost Judgment, which comes off something like Martin Scorsese film, right? Uh, something like The Departed. Uh, then there's the slow burn of redeemable quality and or intense fear from brooding and suspense. So for me, I think I'm more of the 20 to 10, 10 to 20% of the legacy community. I still love this. Absolutely. But I do pine for my No Country for Old Man. Uh, no Country for Old Men kind of style. Where Nishita uh, Nishitani, the guy, is ever looming. He's ever there. His mannerisms, like creepy smile or something that makes him incredibly foreboding. But instead, it kind of comes off as John Wick, where it's a guy to be dispatched by your hero. So, uh, one is definitely more popular than the other, I can tell you now. No Country Old Men got, the al uh, men got all the accolades and stuff, but it's far hold a candle to popularity of the John Wick kind of thing. And then a Scorsese, obviously. Cop drama, organized crime drama. There's less drama in this. It's fast paced action with a very lovable character. In fact, I would make an argument. People keep talking about the whole like Spider-Man and the, and I make, you know, light that he's basically a Batman because Batman is stoic. Spider-Man is not. Just for the record, Spider-Man is way, way less stoic than Kiryu. Idiot is more of a Batman if we are going into comic books. However, I would say that um, he lends way more to like uh, where was I going with this? <laughs> I was, I had a sorry I had a character in mind, but stoicism is a big characteristic of his, and in this one. He's, he doesn't exude that and the characters that he encounter it, it moves at a really brisk pace and it's kind of also plays to the length of this game anyways Nishitani uh, the last thing we saw is that Nishitani he's not dead or like his body wasn't there and somehow he might have not suffered a fatal stabbing with uh, Shishiro it can be a little bit reasonable. Shishiro is not 
one for uh, tactical thinking. But I do miss the incredible ups and downs and the redeemable qualities or the incredible ever foreboding feeling that is the slow burn, right? It's very uncharacteristically non-Japanese, the writing in this. Uh, generally, uh, there's a lot of buildup, a lot of suspense, and then like beats and stuff that really accents the final moments. But it can play to the idea that this is a shorter game. So it makes, I, ironically or not, uh, unexpectedly this is appropriate for a Western audience. Uh, far more appropriate for Western audience. Uh, it's palpable, it's short, it's fast paced like we're not looking for a drive uh with josh gosling we're looking for a fast and furious right that's kind of the thing so if this involved racing and cars and stuff this would be fast furious as opposed to drive or maybe anything that deals with you know, some level of ups and downs and pacing. This is just blitz. Anyways, I like it. It It's a change of pace, more or less. And uh, I'm receptive to it. I do have a personal, personal soft spot for long drawn out suspense, which is very Japanese, actually. Um, this happens to be probably very Western appealing. All right. So we're back at the hideout. And, uh, I totally forgot that guy's name. Uh, Yoshinori? Nora? Nura? I don't know. Yoshi something. <laughs> we'll just refer to him as Yoshi temporarily. I don't think. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to see the guy again. Alright, um... Now we rest up at Akame's place. Because... Oh, and Hana... Hanawa... Was doing cleanup. Alright, we did see Hanawa... A little bit. I do like the auto stand in EX. Like, uh, when you, uh, stance. When you stance change. Uh. When you stance switch, it auto stands you. Brings you back to neutral. You definitely have so much recovery time. Without fighting stance. Still, Jerry's still out on whether I like the auto sprint on I think I'm, I I think we're gonna turn auto sprint on again in battle I just it'll entrain me to hold down fighting stance <coughs> to quick step hey Oh, really? Oh, whoops. 
and I'm just supposed to rest on the couch. That's off to Yagami. Meet with Anua. Okay. Okay. Do I have money? We're saving money because uh, I do want to at least tiger drop uh, someone before the end. I don't know if we're gonna pick up one million. We need to pick up more dinner plates. I think uh, one of the things that make uh, agents agents um, EX so efficient is he advances so much that it uh, isolates the enemy that you are trying to hit. And they don't usually guard against it either. Meanwhile, uh, you have to corner, you have to corner someone. With uh, Yaxa's EX. You, to, you only initiate it into a corner. And generally, I would say, after a mortal counter, I go over this called ultimate counter in this game. Once you ultimate counter someone, you can probably EX into a Yaxa, beat him down, exit out of EX. Or you can uh, stance switch, auto stance into agents and complete the complete the combo even more. Because agents uh, auto advancing takes advantage of the dragon engine's slipperiness. So it, it works both ways. Not only does the slipperiness hurt you when you're doing Yaxa style stuff, it also hurts the enemy when you're in agents and you're slipping around too while attacking. I think it's unintentional, but it's also kind of a characteristic of the dragon engine. If you have moves that constant advance you, it's so safe. Stretch your mouth, guys. Stretch your mouth. Can't you hear I'm thinking right now? Freaking hooligans. Is there a respawning point for a briefcase in here? Usually briefcases in the location, on location, and res respawn. I wonder if that's what they're using. Uh, if they have a passive timer in this game. Oh. Give me this. There's a dinner plate. Is there a dinner plate in here? No. No dinner plate. All right. Ichido Terra ni modori masho. Yoroshii desu ka? All right. Ha. Mo yaru koto wa zenbu sundeiru. Sasuga desu ne. De wa Osaka tomo shibashi no oakare desu. Watase no shushou machi masho.
I don't believe that for a sec. That is such a red herring. Uh, this must be like your news update thing. And when you see subtitles like this, it's actually quite uncharacteristic. This is probably the first time there's been a meanwhile and stuff kind of thing. And what I would say is this is probably the part that could use a little bit of DLC, uh, TLC. However, due to the brisk nature of this, yeah, it really does do be feeling like a, like a action film over a drama film kind of deal. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, we know this to be happening. This is a recap of, uh, so that's the Gomi Jewel. Gomi Jewel's plant is destroyed in a fire, and we know that Casca, Casca's gang deals with that. And it was a eternal struggle, actually, between like the Ejin Three, the controversy among the Ejin Three and the Omi Alliance involvement. Quick recap. Yeah, Okigubo, Okigubo. Uh, Gets outed for the counterfeiting operation, and that's Aoki. Aoki was Okikubo's um, conspiracy opponent. And then Kasuka confronts Aoki, or Arakawa. Right? These are Yaksa Like a Dragon's really, really quick recap. <laughs> Right. And then now Casca gets the down low, right? So we knew this yesterday, or I, you know, presume that's the timing when Sudano was telling Kiryu exactly Daigo and Watase's, Watase's plan. So they have to oust uh, Nishitani for the plan. Identically at the time, concurrently, this would be where Asuka and Gang gets the down low in the same manner, right? This is Yaksa like a dragon stuff. Yeah. Night before. Wait, does he... Yeah. Nice. This, Kasuka snuck in to this already. Kasuka and Gang already snuck into the headquarters. Oh, so they were here. Okay. Okay, so the chairman is still installed. So, whoever the chairman is, uh, I don't think they mentioned the actual chairman's name in uh, Yaksa Like a Dragon as well. And Kurosawa would be the guy, but he had terminal cancer. And this is several years. It's like six years, six or seven years after he had terminal cancer. Uh, from Yaksa 5 because Watase or Katsuya would be the people would be the most likely candidate to to take over um, and Katsuya is not mentioned at all and then Watase is still alive so and then the chairman's going to step down if Watase returns so it's kind of leaning towards the idea that, I mean, they they uh, after the what happened in Yaksa Five, the they don't have a mutual relationship anymore. But nevertheless, we don't know who the current chair is of the Omi Alliance. So this is the first time they mention your chairman, as opposed to saying Nishitani is like the head because yes, he garners the most influence. And I don't know if this is slightly before Casca infiltrates the HQ. 
to talk with Daigo and Co. I'm guessing yes, because they said meanwhile all that's happening. So this so Casca's probably dipped in and then dipped out already from all that. So this is a little after, maybe. Because they're still setting up uh what to say is welcome back <clears throat> stuff. It it's hard, but it's somewhere in in around the same time. <laughs> Dagger wielding armor. Kedo Something has to be said how easily Shishido, like, how composed Shishido is when doing all of this. Like, you know, because he does garner incredible malice. We, we know that now. ある意味可愛がられとったもんな、お前。西谷会長に実家にナブられながら <laughs> Dramatic irony at its finest. Dramatic irony. Mm. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. Because these guys are grunts, so. They don't hold it against the grunts. Yeah. え、では岡前の。いいさ。いつでもどこでもできるのが座禅のいいとこだ。Oh, they didn't know that yeah.青木には深刻なダメージでしょう。つまり、あなたのしている仕事は一派にとっても有益ということです。クエーズワンスターン。私組から受け取った五百億の資産。ただ飯食いと言われたあなたが誰よりも大同時に貢献している。そうやって金で
Okay, that's the setup. That's the setup for his Hawaiian trip. ひとり旅か。普段はあまり頭にないかもしれません。でも改めて考えれば、一つくらいどこか行きたい場所はあるでしょう。そういや。There Yo, if she actually said that in Kiwami 1, that completely slipped my mind. It, it might be a just now kind of thing, like in, in Pi, but if they really had a line like that in Kiwami 1, I don't remember it. If they did, that's crazy. That's a big payoff that just completely slipped my mind. Because uh, when I started playing, right, I played Yakuza 0, I played in a chronological order so at kiwami one i wasn't paying more to all the details but i was still getting used to all the legacy so there were a lot of details that were new so things like that could have still stuck out when they mentioned american location because american locations are very important it's something that would suggest that there's a chance the game would take that route I think this, I don't think there was a line about Hawaii between uh, Yumi and Kiryu, but there, there might have been. And it's not quite clear if it's when they were kids, maybe, or when during Kiwami 1. Because uh, they were Yumi, uh, Nishitani, uh, not Nishitani, sorry, Nishiyama, Nishikiyama and Kiryu are... Uh, orphans at Sunflower, so they were more or less siblings to some, to a great extent. And uh, this comic could be something anywhere between when they were kids all the way to the events of Kiwami One. So it, it's it could be anywhere in there, but I don't remember a Hawaii comment. It's kind of nice though. He's thinking back to Yumi. It's not every day he thinks back to you, me. Which is Haruka's mother. Oh, there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Threw in some Kiwami one. Himawari yeah. Okay. That kind of gives you a framework. Dang. Wow. That's, that's a great way to integrate Yumi. And that was the ring. Or cute Kiwami one. A ring. Hi. Yokena he got the ring in the night of the murder. Dojima's murder. That's kind of a nice way to give him motivation. オミの極道たちを前にいきなり解散を切り出すんだ。何が起きるかわかんねえ。ハワイや旅行先でなくてもいいんです。他に何か欲しいものがあれば何でも。俺は自分の人生も何も消した男だ。欲しいものは何もね
もしあったとしてもあんたに用意できるもんじゃねえ実を言えばあなたが望むものは分かっていますしかし沖縄の子供たちと合わせることだけはできませんいやああよく分かってるわお That was really good. Oh. Yeah, that ring, uh, one of the first things you do after, uh, getting, uh, he was, uh, he was arrested and after that he was arrested and play, uh, went to jail for 15 years but before then uh kiryu bought that ring as a birthday gift for uh yumi but that was also the same night that yumi was abducted by dojima's goons to satisfy dojima uh i've got his first name uh, but Dojima, current head of the Dojima family, and the one that runs the Tojo clan, more or less, because they command the most influence. And then Nishikiyama, her brother, and Kiryu's brother, uh, took him out, and Kiryu took the fall. So that ring goes all the way back to Kiwami 1. In fact, there's a very wonderful shot of the ring. Um as the beginning of the Kiwami 1 game, which goes technically is the first game in development cycle. Uh, and not Kiwami 1 specifically, but the events of Yakuza 1. Nice tie-in. Very nice tie-in. I was curious, uh, uh, Kiryu's motivations. So that's one of the big questions. A really big question. Why did Kiryu go to Hawaii? And that's... That, there it is. Very, uh, very apt for a finale detail. The whole kids thing? I have a lot to say about the kids and Okinawa and whatnot. But one uh, hot take right now, it's probably going to be in my closing remarks about this game, since uh, technically this will be the last standalone Kiryu game, possibly, possibly, probably. Um, uh, Kiwami 3, which may or may not happen, right? And uh, RGG has deflated any potential speculations about Kiwami 3, right? But Kiwami 3 would line up incredibly well now with Like a Dragon 9. And what I mean by that is uh, the send-off for Kiryu leaves a big gaping hole in the thing that is central to his final story, which is this. This final story predicates around everything that Yakuza 3 stands for, which is the kids. Okinawa. Okinawa is the only thing that has not been covered at all. And it comes up because it's his entire legacy. So my hot take is Like a Dragon 9. And the subtitle is going to be something like A Dragon's Legacy. And it's going to feature all nine kids of Okinawa. His morning glory. So this is going to be the post Kiryu era, right? Of anything that hasn't been covered here, but it constantly get teased over and over again, is Kiryu's legacy. And I would call it a dragon's legacy. It would be kind of really apt to name that. And there are exactly nine kids outside of Yuta and Haruto. But Haruto might not be old enough. But he has eight orphanage kids plus Haruka, which is nine. 
and they have so many mini game systems that each of the kids, including Haruka, can have a career based around their mini games. You know, real estate management, uh, company stuff, racing, baseball, singing, uh, a restaurant owner. There, there's so many things that could populate all the kids. And it could end up being a JRPG structure too, because you could imagine something like a persona uh, like thing for all the kids. That's, that's my hot take. And then it would line up with a pre-release of Kiwami 3 first, because Kiwami 3 would fill in all the kids in the context with Kiryu. So Kiryu and the kids would be reintroduced all over again with fleshed out story, with even greater fleshed out stories. And it would be a primer for Like a Dragon 9, which will feature all the kids. And Kiryu would be in the background or he would act as a post-mortem, like after death inspiration for everything, which fills in all the writing that uh, RGG is known for. Using a prominent character as motivation to inspire a legacy and those legacy characters then inherit the characteristics of their like father figure, like their parental figures and it would uh, bloom into something that shows the reach of one person, one person's influence. And it ties in with the development cycles that they want to do, which is to create a secondary release that's staggered and complements a primary mainline release. And then somehow judgment is thrown in there somewhere, but we're specifically talking about this. So it would bring Kiryu back again for a primer series, like a Dragon Gaiden being a primer series for Infinite Wealth. If Kiwami 3 was released right before Like a Dragon 9. And I feel like uh, they like playing with numbers because it's called Like a Dragon Infinite because it kind of has the elements of 8, right? The cleverness. I, I, it, it's too much of a coincidence. But 9 would really be very appropriate if it stood for his 9 kids. And what I mean by that is the nine younger ones outside of Haruka. But the biggest like stopgap here is probably securing the voice actors, right? Um, they keep teasing that Haruka's voice actor and like maybe Taichi's voice actor is there. And, and it's constantly teased like whoever they could get their hands on, in my opinion, that's probably the logistics getting their hands for a little scene here and there. There's a chance they might have recorded all those scenes well in advance to be used here and there. But that's the thing that is absolutely missing. Yaksa 3 is like the black sheep of everything. It is the one part of Kiryu's life that is incredibly different. It's the part that's missing in this game, in my opinion. So often it's always a balance of Yaksa 3 stuff, which is the slice of life endearment gaining new friends, creating a new home, and then that home gets disturbed constantly. That's that's the pacing of RGG games, but that's all stripped out, um, in my opinion. For better or for worse, I think uh, this, again, caters to the vast majority of players who are here filled with, like, they want video bopping heads and stuff, and I'm in the minority. I don't think that is the strength of, because this story, the way this game is presented, panders really, really well to uh, the Western market, especially male dominated driven action people. So your dooms, right? Your doom lovers, your, uh, here I say your FromSoft lovers, this is more along the pace because uh, story is constantly paired, parodied by action. 
uh, I would sit down and watch, you know, Nakahara, the patriarch for the Ryudo family in the Okinawa chapter, Yakuza 3, all over again about Saki, how he adopted Saki, who's a mute, who's technically not mute at birth, who was abused, so she was not able to speak, right? Or Rikia trying to make it as a small-time Yakuza member who gets charmed by Kiryu and ultimately sacrifices his life to protect Kiryu. That was a, one of those moments that Kiryu was lucky. He's blessed, right? That's kind of what the priest said here. Um, things like that. I don't know. I know that wasn't much of a hot take because it was ra rather long, but like a Dragon 9, there are nine kids. Just saying, nine kid, maybe plus one. <laughs> maybe like a Dragon 10. 10 kids. <laughs> I, it, it's so convenient. It, it's written there. It, it would cost a lot though, and the development cycle would be kind of long. Um, and they would have to recreate uh, Okinawa again, right? Um, what was the city called? Uh, Yushu? No. Ryushu? Ryuku? Might have been Ryuku. Something like that. Uh... Uh, but they already rendered, uh, they already rendered Morning Glory, uh, in Dragon Engine. It was used in Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, when you moved around. Oh, hey. Hey.えー。あんたをお待ちしとったんです。こちらの暇人が上流来るまで待ちたい言うて急に来てな。うちは忙しいっちゅうのにほんま迷惑やったわ。わあ、わあ、わあ。あっさよんなよ。どうした何があったええ。大したことやないんですが。明日の話です。もろもろ説明しとこう思うて。せやけど、ここじゃ何ですから。明日。明日。ソーテンボリの外れにある建築現場で待ち合わせです。親父は無所出たその足で来ますんで、詳しいとスーツに着替えてもらおうてから、大見連合の本部へ向かいます。私は俺が来ると知ってんのか。ええ。弁護士伊
getting in my opinion they're really getting good at these oneers uh i call them oneers because i lost judgment and kaito that kaito files had a lot of oneers they they were just all oneers there's so many different story mechanics like story beats that they had in presentation and this is one of them it's just one time deal <sighs> dang all of them kind of implies a similar outcome right like um, lift your head already as in like you you already know the truth. What do you think? It says the same thing and this is pretty much like There there's a follow-up to all of these like I'll never forgive you um, I think this is not the cold-hearted. I'll never forgive you. I think it's more like Hideo is saying um, If I were to forgive you it would lose weight, right? Or the weight, the burden that he has. And uh, I don't think Kiryu is a character that would ever lighten a burden. And remove the consequences. Or forget to remind someone the consequences of their actions. So to forgive him would make it seem like it may be slightly okay. But I kind of like lift your head already. I, I'm, it's a little in between both. もういいから頭を上げてくれ。分かった。いえ、許すと言ってくれはるまで、俺のこんな頭ずっと下げとったらええんです。Does it go back? じゃあ、許す。あ、オッケー。ほ、ほんまでか。オッケー。で、話はそれだけか。オッケー。いえ。オールライト。一つだけやけど、ええニュースもあります。うん。Fair enough. オミレンゴの本部に侵入者が現れました。その一人が元の長官。カスが一番って男で。キリュさん、ご存知ですか？最近、18年ぶりに無所出てきたんです。うっすら聞いた記憶がある。18年前は俺もオリの中にいたんだ
This is the last free time you have in the game. If there's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so they decide to end it here. Wait. Okay. I was kind of expecting the... Uh, I mean, last free time. So it might lead into the Nish, uh, Nishitani... Nishitani... Uh, wrap up. Be advised from here on. Consecutive battles will take it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is wonderful and they keep doing the, that they keep doing this, uh, stuff where they add the bits, like, fair warning, this is it, and this is it, um, nah, I should be fine, <laughs> we're fine, no tiger drop, unfortunately, I couldn't get to it, we'll do it in premium adventure, and then in the English playthrough, Whenever that is released. No announcement on the English ドキドキ。<笑> これから大海ぶっ壊そう Hey. The end of an era. Both figuratively and literally. There's the legend himself. Not the white suit, though. But weirdly colored pants. <laughs> <laughs> he just got out of prison, so that's kind of expected. Dang. Been a while, what I say. It's been a while. Notodegagoyago.com.de.大道寺の首輪もかなり緩くなりました。よう来てくれたな、キリは。お互いややこしい立場になったもんや。あんた探すのにどんだけ銭つこだか。だってそうそう、金の話とはな。Okay, so it is worth highlighting here that. Uh, in my opinion, the opus, uh, the magnum opus, right, of the pre-Dragon Engine era of RGG is Yaksa 5, uh, remastered. It rivals that of the current gold standard, Lost Judgment, in terms of volume, execution, like, peak, everything. So... But Yaksa 5 Remastered, in my opinion, would probably be the last of the games that most people who are interested in climbing into the long legacy. Because Yaksa 5 is development cycle and every everything, story writing, all that stuff, is something that's like, in my opinion, the thing that made the RGG crew unique is the exploratory writing and exploratory like game design it's the furthest out there and i would say lost judgment is the second coming of that but with a lot more refinement so in this case it's worth mentioning because it's going to be a while before this type of relationship fills in for any player of the 
any new player for the series. Watase's relationship with Kiryu and how they met is very, very Yakuza-like, but they are both honor-bound uh, Yakuza. So if Watase and Kiryu were to meet under different circumstances, they would be incredibly strong-suited companions. Watase is, at the time, was part of the Omi Alliance, and Kiryu was on behalf of the Tojo. So because of their circumstances, they had a conflict of interest. But these two characters are... If we were to... If I were to make a gamble, and there was a background, Watase probably would reflect Kiryu's personality incredibly easily, because they are brazen, straight and narrow, easily manipulated, and incredibly trusting and honor-bound. So these two characters, when they're greeting each other, it's like they were met with honor-bound things. Even though they were caught up in intrigue, they were met under political circumstances between Tojo and Omi. But even within that, in Yakuza 5, they were honor-bound. And uh, through the, like, a bunch of things that happened willy-nilly everywhere because it was discovery writing, um, at the end, they were still honor-bound. And they fought each other, but they were really fighting for a purpose to write the conspiracy. Uh, Kiryu and Watase both have low tolerance and need or motivation to be involved in politics and intrigue so these are the meeting of two giants that are unfortunately you don't know a lot about watase because the only time he showed up was as kiryu's adversary not a villain just as his like rival and Watase also in Yakuza 5 reached out to Kiryu just to challenge his legacy, not necessarily to kill or like do political intrigue or something underhanded. It's just two guys trying to demonstrate who has more power and legacy. So these two go way back, go back like six years now. However, uh, you know, Kiryu had lots of conflicts in the meantime. That's kind of something that won't probably be appreciated for a very long time. Because this is probably the last time you'll see Watase for a while. Maybe ever. Until somehow it reaches Yakuza 5 for a Kiwami or something. Maybe. むかしはもっと夢のある男だった。死人にバケとった男が<笑> There are two characters that are very similar. わしらを人間扱い戦でもええようにしてくれはった。この先極道は組織ごと狼の言いなりになるが、地下に潜ってマフィアになるかや。そうらしいな。今やったらまだ第三の選択肢を用意できる。組を解散して。新しい受け皿でできる限り多くの極道を救い上げる。これが遅れれば遅れるほど、わしらにできることはなくなってくんねえ。ほんで、より多くの極道を路頭に迷わせることになる。それが正しい判断かどうか、正直、俺には分からね
だがお前らが命張ってやろうとしてることだ<笑>手を重ねる理由を思いつけなかったコンディションも大同士のリスクしょってきてくれてることは聞いとるわそれでも大見連合と登場がいいこの二大組織に引導を渡すには伝説の極道たちが必要や、うん、今日は頼むでキリファン親父、うん、解散届はお持ちでん歴史的な瞬間です解散届持って決めのポーズくれませんかおい<笑>アホなこと抜かすな<笑>ええー、やないですか今時は何でも記録に残すんですねえキュリュウさんあおいやめろやええー、加減にせ<笑>死んだはずの登場会元四代目と結託した近江連合若頭<笑>組を裏切り近江連合の解散を画策その懐には今警察への解散届が入っスピーキングオブライガシービルディングなるほどなお前は解散に反対っちゅうわけか獅子の Of course this was going to happen 大海の人間がこの動画見てもたら、yep. 誰かてお前らぶっ殺すわ Let's see そんで俺は裏切り者を暴き出した He does betray Gideon. Is this real? To the eyes of Atasegumi, I died to go. Yep. More Nemas must soon do it. Like I said yesterday uh, uh, and today in the beginning, the moment I saw like Shishido、um, when Kiryu was、uh, trying to、uh, take out、um, Got Shishido to pick up Nishitani's body and then he pushed Kiryu to go forward and then he stabbed Nishitani a bunch of times. The first thing I thought was that's an act of betrayal, but it could have also been a power play. And sure enough, the closest guy is a turncoat.、Uh, this is a classic mechanic, too. So you kind of. If you're a legacy player, you kind of see this coming from, from a mile away. You're wondering who is going to betray Gideon because there's generally a power struggle and a power vacuum that must be filled so people will gun for it. And often, often than not, you get used to the idea that the person closest to Gideon is the one that takes advantage of his good faith. And、uh, it echoes who said it? I think it's Hanua. Someone says it at least once in the, in the game,、uh, in a story, where they're often very surprised that someone like Kiryu survived this long. And it's actually, I say it time and time again nice people, like cons. Convicted、uh, conviction, you know, with conviction, people who are constitutively nice, like Kiryu, who part of his principle and pride is constantly being nice and compassionate, you don't survive in this in、uh, environment like this. So he is incredibly lucky. He's a character that does not exist realistically at all. When you're pridefully nice, This happens all the time, and you'd be at the bottom of a ditch, unfortunately. Or in the modern age, you know, in the peaceful era, I suppose, when you're not in organized crime, you probably end up living a minimum wage, maybe even less, and taken advantage of. So it goes into a digression about the difference between being a kind person versus being a nice person. Nice guys, nice guys do finish last. Kind people are the ones that succeed. They, know, they understand the balance between looking out for yourself and helping others when you have the ability to. Hideo, on the other hand, is a nice guy. He does things at the cost of his own life. And Suruno is too. So is Watase. 
but that's why they're like honor bound characters right characters that are recognized that well you're willing to put your life down for what this and that's kind of unfortunately shishido is the guy uh what's another prominent betrayal it would probably be yakuza 5 uh baba and saijima so saijima is like kiryu where uh they're honor bound deep so they're constantly being compassionate in a tough way saijima is more of a tough love kind of person but when you're on it bound by blood, it's unconditional and it's easily betrayed. And Baba did get swayed in the end, though. But he did. He was a traitor for some time. He gets betrayed all the time. Like every single game that features him, he gets betrayed for his uh, niceness. And here we are. I didn't want to believe it. At first, I thought maybe that's where it ends, but here we are again. <laughs> it 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 might be a conventional writing, but it's also very realistic, uh, in my opinion. It, it's the most realistic part uh, when it comes to having a protagonist that is just inherently compassionate all the time. Uh, the unrealistic part is Kiryu always gets lucky. He he is always lucky enough to not be um killed or whatnot in that manner like he's literally lucky but spiritually and mentally he's probably easily the most unlucky person in the world because he's nice and what i mean by that is instead of dying like literally dying a million times or figuratively literally dying in this game right he ends up being scarred over and over again. Because every time he averted death in this world, it's because someone else died for him. So, like, someone else was collateral. So, it's kind of that whole um, trope where you have a character and trouble follows them wherever they are. Well, it's not necessarily trouble that follows them everywhere they are, is a lot of people have a lot of problems. And if you're a nice person, you're attracted to problems. You want to be able to proactively help in those situations. And um, as a nice person, you're constantly struggling to want to separate yourself, but you can't. Right, Kiryu, that's his character. He is constantly trying to say, I don't want to get involved anymore because he's a run he's a walking calamity. He he's attracted he the longer a nice person lives, the more wreckage he leaves behind. So the more people he help, the more conflict of interest he'll encounter. So the longer Kiryu lives without like trying to break away the more chances he will encounter a remnant of his past so the bigger your legacy becomes the more your legacy touches so it works both ways it's a double edge right so he's constantly practicing this act i can't tell you you want me one he tries to run away because you me and or not. Kiwami 2, he did it again. Kiwami 3, he went to Okinawa, still did it again. Uh, Yakuza 4, he comes back just to help out. <laughs> Yakuza 5, he was a taxi driver. Yakuza 6, he uh, leaves and tries to stay incognito to in uh, Hiroshima, right? And then in Yakuza 6, he fakes his death. So it just keeps going. It just keeps on going. And that's kind of uh, what I kind of resonate with the most. The idea that if you just can't help to your core to being a nice person, this is what the life, not like literally contextually, but this is kind of how it feels all the time. It feels great to help people, but every time you help people, 
you almost feel that you have to be masochistic in a way to be a nice person. It's very different uh, for a healthy person who finds balance. Those are kind people. You choose when to be kind because you know you can be kind in the moment. So, for example, a rich person can be a kind person because they have the resources to be kind. But they have to get rich to be kind. So at one point, they are selfish in order to get to that position. If you're a nice person, you never get to be rich yet because you don't put yourself first. So usually people who have less tend to be nicer than those who have more. But those who have more can have the opportunity to sustainably, sustainably be kind while being successful. So successful people are kind. They are not nice people. Because they have to be able to not be nice. As in, they have to know when to get the job done, which Shishido seems to know because he's looking out for number one. He wants to take over the Omi Alliance, and that's fair. Now that he took out Nishitani, really. Although we don't know if Nishitani is dead or alive at the moment. Anyway, it's just a little slight nod to uh, the realism, I would say. It's, it's one of the most consistent, realistic things that I like that is used to introduce conflict. I don't know if this was the intent of the writer, but Urata... Uh, Yokoyama, um, if they wanted to explore the themes of organized crime and legacy and slice of life in this manner, but that's my interpretation of it. it. If it's a coincidence, it's not so a coincidence because uh, it's a human condition thing. All these tend to tie together realistically. So they were writing based on realism or inspirations from stuff it's not a coincidence that these things line up all the time, like Kiryu being betrayed, or it feels natural for him to be betrayed. Uh, like, why isn't he perceptive enough to avoid being betrayed? That's a, it's a character trade-off. It's, some might call it a character flaw, which are people who uh, picture character, like personalities as uh, a blanketed slate that doesn't come with trade-offs. Idiot is incredibly nice, so therefore he's going to be betrayed all the time. Um, one loves to believe, in my opinion, an idolist would love to believe that, no, I can be nice all the time and still not encounter any of these hardships. That's just, in my opinion, incredibly blind and idolistic where you hope that contextually you never meet someone who's opportunistic. Which, when you're nice, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm constitutively nice because I wouldn't be in the position I am if I'm incredibly nice, but I would say in a minority, I resonate with niceness. And generally, in most of those times, I've lost to opportunist all the time. And it's a... I'm willingly choosing to do that. So it's largely closer to kindness. I know I'm going to be at a loss. And that's kind of why I have, a, I'm a stickler for people who volunteer for things. Because when they volunteer, the vast majority of people are opportunists when they volunteer. They are not nice people who volunteer. They are selectively being kind for a motivated reason. When I volunteer, I expect to lose something. My time, my stamina, that kind of thing. So I, but beforehand, I'm acting voluntarily, knowing that I'm going to. Instead of the whole thing where you volunteer to feel good about yourself, which then you deny, yet you get frustrated when you're volunteering. Like, well, that's kind of at odds with each other. It's a talking topic that I share quite a lot. Anyways, it's one of the 
most realistic aspects of these games and i i really like it the writing is on point um and you could think like oh but kiryu become cynical right he can become cynical to protect himself like well we have to know he is an honor bound character when you are arrogant and stubborn you don't adapt to it you stick to it so it is very clear that if you have Kiryu as a character, that's, he'll take it to his grave. And that's kind of the trade-off for being arrogant and prideful and honor-bound. So if you're a person who struts around and say, I know the difference between right and wrong, you probably can resonate with Kiryu. I don't. I don't resonate with Kiryu at all. But uh, the consequences of his resolve and stuff, I resonate through empathy. I, I, there are many different ways to get into this situation, and one of them is being prideful about knowing right and wrong. The other situation is the complete opposite, which is uh, one of being a contrarian, constantly being a contrarian to be fair. So to me, I have a conviction for being fair. And ironically, most people who keep saying to be honest or to be fair are Kiryu people, not being contrarians. So in that way, I don't resonate with Kiryu at all. But the people who play this video game absolutely most desirably do. Whether they are or not, they desire to be like Kiryu, which is fair, right? Just... A little slight deep cut of what these games can symbolize. All right. Let's see what happens to Shishiro. I still feel like uh, if I had to call it, Suruno and Kiryu will still somewhat forgive him if he doesn't uh, end up six feet under. We will see. Aya, Umaira. That's a good one. I like it. He said he challenged Kiryu from being narrow minded. Kiryu is narrow minded, but, uh, Kiryu uh, had a good, good comeback because everyone in here is actually narrow-minded. They have one vision, one conviction, and that's how they got here. Generally speaking, you need a little level of narrow-mindedness to have enough conviction to seize things for yourself. If you are constitutively open-minded and incredibly compassionate, you're trying to be a nice person, which really doesn't get you far because you're kind of going to be constantly conflicted and not committed there it is opportunism ずっと待っとった。大見解散の陰謀を暴く。この決定的瞬間をな。そんな前から裏切っとったか。ドアホ。先に裏切ったのはお前らやろか。はい。Well. Uh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. It's the other way around. It's subterfuge. Oh, that's so clever. I was so gullible. 
that's not bad. Not bad at all. So uh early um at the beginning of today I was like, how did he survive the stabbing, right? Right? They were in it together. That would be dude. Well played. Well played, Furata son. That's great. If that that was the plan all along. Where the stage stabbing because it's a power grab. I was wondering when Nishitani was going to show up again. That's great. Man. Anyways. Makes sense. Alright. Alright. Fair enough. You got me. Ah! That face. Kiryu Kazuma ni watase masaru. Oh, he's got a bigger blade. <laughs> no longer a knife. That smile. Dang. Alright, alright, you got me. So it all comes out. It's all betrayal, yes. Ah, uh, yep, yep. Well played. Well played. Double layer of intrigue. That's so good. And it makes sense. Now, even the little, like, hint of the guy that said, like, yeah, man, he was really riding you like a prize pony, right? Like, he really favored you. So, there was no, uh, there was a lot of, uh, hints. As to like they're really close, right? And also, um, all the other interactions. There was a little thought in the back of my head on yesterday's play where like Sudano is your only contact most of the time, but Shishido is just always in the background. Like, and he's always a little bit more earnest when it comes to lying and not lying and backstabbing and not backstabbing i mean i just said that earlier it's like man he's really he's really good at being a liar and then at the same time he's constantly incredibly loyal to the omi alliance like the status of the omi alliance so all that really does check out although i would have to say the writing was fairly nice enough where it could go both ways so it was more like a coin flip. How deep the betrayal went, I love that. I, I absolutely love that. Yeah, it, it, you get kind of blindsided by these things, but I love being blindsided by you. It, it's like the big reveal. It's like, nope, you got to think deeper. That, it's, it's, this is good. This is really good. Well played. Well played. そこに手差し出して拾ってくれたんはあんたや。頭。その運を仇で返すんか。ガキンコラ、ゴミくず同然やって俺な。今じゃ肩で風切って街歩いとる。ずっと憧れよった眩しい夜を生きとるんやで。
俺が手にしたもんは全部この俺が自分の力で勝ち取ったもんやそれをなんや国をなくすやと大見連合を解散させるアホルカセ頭湧いとるかごしるけが It is worth noting while uh, uh, we know up to this point that Watase's like, second in command was always Sudano. So it, it was made very clear that Sudano could not be the traitor because、uh, it, he, he's always been like, the closest guy who had all the information, all the stuff. And Chishido always felt like. Uh, up to this point, at least, for the most part, felt like he's on the fringe and he's only on a need to know basis. So、It's, it checks out very well that this whole conflict of interest here can, can happen. Shishido. Say, I get it. Oh, my, I don't know. In both, how I get it at the door of the Nanma Show, come on. Toki got Kuruma, do you guys talk? Yeah, yeah, see, there it goes. Sarani. 証拠つかんだとして、一人で大見を塗り替えれる思うほど、俺もアホちゃう。That's fair. So you had to line up with Nishitani. 誰もついてこんや。基人会を後ろ盾にしたら、みんな解決や。Man, that face. この間、カジバで助け出した西谷会長に、俺は手の内全部探した。キリュウカズマの製造。大海連合と登場会の解散計画驚愕の裏切り許しがたい陰謀だよだろ渡瀬の兄貴昔はあんた人言派の出ってことも気にせず俺を認めてくれたじゃない極道は力さえありゃそれが全てだって口だけじゃなく手本も見せてくれたあんたを本物の男だと信じたから代わりに手汚すのだって構わなかったんじゃねえか<笑>あんたが任侠の善玉みたいな顔してられんのは誰のおかげだよなのにこの俺を解散の邪魔だ殺せ始末しろときた<笑>耳を疑っちまうよなちゃうあんたを殺すっちゅうのは俺が言い出したことや黙ってろつるの言い訳にもならねえんだよそんなもん俺のことも大海のことも I feel like Hana was gonna jump in on this somehow the Daidoji それでどんだけ傷ついたと思うなあそれに引き返し、has allies now who owes him a favor。マジでお手柄だ。愛してるぜ。The question is, is Nishitani like say they get out, right? There, there is one thing that may or may not happen because we're on the side of Kiryu, Suruno, and Watase. Um, even if they succeed. There is a very good chance that Shishido and Nishitani will betray each other. Right? It could go deeper.、Uh, but the game, I don't think, that, because of the game's length and the story length that's already projected in development, it's not going to explore that. But I would say it would be really something else to expand that part too, where, okay, well, they got away. And eventually, actually, Nishitani and Shishiro would end up fighting each other and they would take each other out. That would be a more realistic outcome here. Because、um, uh, Kiryu and Suruno,、uh, Suruno and Watase can just bide their time because they're infighting. I mean, if it's one of those things, Shishiro betrayed Suruno and Watase. Nishitani will be most likely aware and keep track of Shishiro because if you can do that, or maybe they, maybe Shishiro was never in, you can make it the argument Shishiro was groomed already to never have been in there on their side ever. 
that could make them a, a good argument that they would trust each other unconditionally. But generally speaking, they would eventually probably take each other out as well. Which feels more in line with if you really wanted to like dig deep into the older, longer games, something like that would probably occur where there's infighting between the third parties. In this case, there's really only been two parties in this game. There wasn't room, like a really large room enough to be a third party. The other like third or fourth party are like the mini game related things. So it's other organ lower tier organization stuff like the Four Kings and whatnot, which we'll see later. And like Akame and the, uh, what is it? The Kyo, Kyo Suno the clan. I, I forgot their names already, but yeah. Anyways, something to think about. And technically Tojo would be a third party in the I can empathize with that, what I say. Me too. Me too. Nah, Hanua. Come on, Hanua. This is a perfect time for that Yoshi guy and Hanua to show up at, at some point. Or... Or... Oh, oh, or... I mean, they're, they're having a really fun spat. This is also funny as well because uh, Watase is... Uh, Kiryu is poking fun if Watase got softened by prison. But that's exactly how he was treated when he <laughs> left prison. Uh, because Majima challenged Kiryu on like, Hey, uh, you softened up. You, you, you're a little bit rusty. So let, let's get you back up to speed, right? And that's a running joke because Kaska also got treated the same way. So like, yeah, yeah, you know, you're... It's been a while. You're, you're a little rusty. Let's, let's get you up to speed. And because of that... It's Watase and Kiryu here, right? And like, who else could show up? Well, Majima and Saijima could show up. Would Daigo? I mean, technically, uh, oh, no, no, but it, it's less likely because the first time Majima, and actually, I take it back. It, it, it can't be them because uh, the first time Majima and Saijima sees Kiryu, they were surprised, which is at, the Omi headquarters. Dang it. No, no, no. I, I don't think so. Maybe Daigo. I don't know. Daigo could because maybe Daigo is not surprised. I don't know. I, I'm my my money's on Daidoji showing up at the at the end. Like they, you still win this fight, but something is scripted to bad happen, and then Hanawa and that other dude show up, and they end up being more of the good guys that or interest align guys i don't know I, I love doing this little brainstorming thing because if it doesn't happen the way you expect you could imagine it as an alternative timeline it's like kind of understanding story writing in itself like what do you do after this what's going to happen next well there are very two or three very likely scenarios and then you have to make a counter argument right I just did that with Majima and Saijima. I would love to see them show up, but we already know that in Yakuza Like a Dragon, the first time they see Kiryu again is in that Omi Alliance headquarters. Because they were shocked then. So there's no possible way they could have met here. It's a shame, though. <laughs> it would be pretty, pretty boss. Let's see what happens. Idaro. Huh? 
Yeah, how are you? I'm a legend and a trio. 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 だが随分でかい穴がある。あ。ここで俺らを始末できなかった場合はどうなる。その時は何もかもご破産じゃねえのだ。本当にここにいるお前らだけで俺たちを止められるのか。バットアーマー。But it's all about the process. How are they going to get out alive? I, I'm so curious. Just because they have plot armor doesn't make it more interest, any less interesting. That kind of parallels uh, Kamurocho's own alliance. Alright. Oh, I hear, I hear a gun. Where is the gun at? Oh my gosh. Where the heck is the gun? Oh, there he is. What is that guy squatting in the background? Must have heat. Oh, no. Who, who did he throw that against? Not me. Okay. What the heck? Wait, how'd you get up there? What? Oh, grapple. It's time to grapple. <laughs> okay. Joy, I see guns. Gotta take out the guy with the gun. Oh, that caught me in the back. I didn't think he was gonna attack twice. Wow, that took that took everything. Are you serious? Really? Wow, he, he slashed me even before I got a move. Yep, that's uh that's boss scaling for you. That's absolute boss damage scaling. Happens all the time when you're doing MSQ dominant runs. You don't even get a chance to react because uh, you don't see anything right away.
I don't know what triggers him, triggers the next phase though. It might just be getting rid of the guys. Oh, there goes all my life. Yep. There goes all my life. I guess the stun was 8 billion years. So he starts off with, uh, uh, ultimate. An ultimate strike. So, that's kind of a problem. What the heck? Hitting two guys with guns, which is really annoying. I couldn't even recover from that. I was hard. I was holding uh, RB so long, and I couldn't even get a chance to recover from that. There's no quick step cancel from that. That is so BS. So much BS. He just hit me in the back. Hit me for 20% of my life again. Yes. Got lucky there. Oh, yeah, I think we just. It's probably his health. So if you take down his health, it triggers the phase. But yeah, that, uh, that heavy. Heavy is just really terrible in this game when it comes to sparring. No heavies if you're. if you don't have the tools to cancel. This might be an error here, but... Okay. Man, these things really are terrible <laughs> outside of these. Okay, uh... As well, you... Yep, active for 8 billion years. An active swing for 8 billion years. A recovery swing for 8 billion years. He has so many horizontal slashes that last forever. Yep. Slipped out. No hit stun. Even though it was a whiz punish. Just slips, slips away. Yep.
Okay. Alright. Did I just hear a gun? Yep, gun. What the heck? Yep, that uppercut just slipped by. It happens so often in this game. <laughs> just went right through his body. Alright. Screw you and your, your transition. I am uh, going to chug this. I don't, I didn't trust the buffering, uh, that I would buffer two quick steps into that. I had to make sure. No Daidoji, huh? Oh. He'll be all right. It's not it's not over for him. <laughs> Dang, so they did take it all. No Hanawa to the rescue. That's kind of not how smartphones work, but... <laughs> oh. Ow. That would explain a lot, actually. よく来てくれましたね。俺が一番殺したかったのはあんただよ。わしもお前やったらそう考える。お前に殺されるんだったら知らない。あんたそういうとこが好きだった。なんで裏切った？なんでだ私。Oh, there they are. <laughs> Rip. That sucks. There they are. Anima. Alright.
Okay. Hana, nande koko ni? Uchi mo oru de. Saikin wa uchi demo Agame san kara souten bori no jouhou o shiirete mashite ne. Kanojo wa taishita mono desu. Kono machi ittei ni me to mimi o hari megurase. He's so unfazed by violence. Suru to kyo. Shinda hazu no nishita ni rashiki jinbu tsu ga mokugeki sareta to. What the heck? Honno tsui sakki na. What is up with Akame? Yoke na osuwa ka tomo omoi tsu.様子を見に来たんです。手ぶらじゃなんなので、リムジンをお持ちしました。大見の若頭を乗せるなら、これくらいのグレードでないと。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です
オウミの若頭が泣き言ばかりでは困りますねおいおいお前もう黙っとれ今のは一言余計どころの話じゃないでこっちはガタキ殿のメイクで隠してるみやしかも本部ついたら精一杯強がらなあかん今だけ多めに見てくれやそれがお望みとあらば花は大海の本部まで花はどのぐらいだ10分もあればつきます。つまり、uh, に大海連合と登場会の解散が宣言される。どこ吹っ飛ばすかもわからん爆弾に火をつけるっちゅうわけや。ああ、あんたは大層の役を買って出たもんだ。極道って歴史にインドを渡そうってんだからな。だが。これはあんたにしかできねえ、うん、解散宣言の書状ってのがあるのかうんちゃんと用意してあるまるで遺言でも書いとる気分だった確かに似たようなもんかもな鬼が出るか蛇が出るかまあ最悪に備えとったら間違いないやろ I just say car radio. That sign. Sasuga ni Honke Wakagashira no Democrato Naruto so can this ne. There's a Konohito Tachi Mitsu Kumiwa Kyo de Kaisan. Ask us friend. And a Masumi Arakawa's right hand man. Kizwa Toda. Imagine say the Ichiban no Itamiya Kaoga Hikitran Yu Koraetur. お前は俺が守りきってみせる。Hey back. Or the 誰にも指一本触れさせやしねえ。おい、やめや。<笑>これでまうやろ。We know the scene come up.、Uh, Kiryu is the one that、uh, stops the advance of someone who is going after him. Already from Yaksa like a dragon. So, this is more of a dramatic irony part having legacy knowledge. I'm not going to come with us? Come on. あなたはこの先も大道寺のために働いていただきます。必ず生きて戻るように。ああ。He also gets to meet him in the, in the streets, Casca in the streets, when he's at a bloodlust. There they are, father and son. And the brothers? The Jima brothers. Was gonna in the way, was a good touch. Can't say Omi Rengo at a chagirat and a Hakunen is more mine in Arius. So say, can you a take taste to the Soskiton of course almost Kyokos? Oko no Jim may have seen our Tarekish more in us. 地域住民の皆様におかれては我々に対して恐怖感威圧感を抱かれた方々も多く誠に申し訳ございませんでした<笑>つきましては現会長および組は駄菓子は渡瀬勝の連盟により本日をもって関西近江連合を解散いたしますう嘘やろ大阪府警本部長を取れどどないなってますんやカシラ何を取るんやウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウェイウ
Oh, there they are. I, I just saw Hanjogi and Zhao flashed momentarily in on the side. This is new. Flipping in. Dagger wielding. This is this is in Yakuza. Hi. Yep. <笑>今日のために念入りに研いできたんやで。最初の餌食になるのは誰なんや。マシマの兄さん。いっさい兄さん。<笑> Endo joins flip sides momentarily. Ultimately a traitor though. Yep. <laughs> Uh, long story short, uh, this is a hot take, but Tendo is Shishido. Uh, she, uh, it's Casco's Shishido. He swapped sides because of opportunity. And then swapped sides again for his own gain. It, it's the, he, he is the Shishido. なんや、重いことになってきましたな。で、今天童の横におるもじゃもじゃが夕べ話したカスガです。ここで俺の都政も終わりだな。でもそれを一世一代の王元化で締めくくれるわけだ。Also, big deal, really big deal. Um, this would be the first time that uh Nishikiyama's voice actor and uh Kiryu's voice actor occupies the same scene again. Uh, because Kasuka's Japanese voice actor is Nishikiyama, which was Kiwami one, uh, Kiwami one and Kiwami two. It's his brother. So, in terms of legacy, in terms of Japanese, act, like the voice actors, they're in the same room again, a uh, figurative room. So, kind of interesting that they're re meeting again in a different life spiritually. <laughs> Oh, there's some flash of some members. Oh, there's Namba and Psycho and uh Adachi. Same scene. With with these that's added in between. Oh here it is. It explains why Watase stood still. Um, because he has a wound right now. Oh, that's right. That's right. Daigo didn't know. Because uh, Watase says here, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yojimbo. 
There it is. The freaking theme. And then the Koi Dragon, Nishikiyama. Ah, so good. That theme. Uh, that theme. Uh, Kiryu's theme. I heard a gun. Uh, there it is. Oh, I just saw the gun. Wait. Where's the guy with the gun? What the heck? That. What? H how did that guy beat me out of the. Okay. More peace. Oh, the theme drop sends chills, man. Oh, I heard a gun. Oh, there's there are two guns. Oh, there's another gun somewhere? Oh, man. Wow, that got cancelled. Wait, is the guy still up? That was weird. It whiffed all of a sudden. I knew I couldn't trust the the buffering, the quick step buffering. Good thing I healed that one little smidgen, because I it it always has to be reconditioned. The buffering on quick step over and over again. I was waiting for it too.
absolutely no recovery time. No recovery on with. That little salmon onigiri. I always quick step right before he gets hit, and it's not good enough in this game. It's like 200 milliseconds. It's out of sheer habit. The timing is just different in this game. キリオさん。キーワルスナヤ。どうしますか。わしのその用心棒はあんたらに呼ばれる名前を持っとらん。ようにた知り合いがおるかもしれんけど、別人や。いやしかし、用心棒の派遣元は大道なんたらいうお
it's it's almost meme to heck, but that was the calmest Hideo chan ever. So I'm sure there's gonna be some videos out there at this point now that um talk about like that's even the this is probably easily top number one or number two. There were two one other moment where Majima said Kiryu chan <laughs> without without sounding like a maniac, right? Like an egomaniac. Yeah. <laughs> I love the character switch. Majima does that all the time. His uh, voice switching between playful and uh, serious. There he is. Yep. Go up and running. Survive the fall. Shishido. Omae, mada. Erai sakki no komotta meishitoru. Aitsu wa oru no kyaku da. It looks good kill. Mada keri ga tsuite nakatta nde na. Nai. Omae shibaraku miyuchi ni yuo natta ka? Sore ga aitsu ga tsuyoi ka ya. Ore ga ikitoru kagiri. お前らはここから通さん。ゴミ連合ぶっ壊す運やったな。その前に俺を殺さな。もう終わりや。シシド。逃がしもええ加減にせ。雑魚は引っ込んどけ。するの。何やと。手追いの獣やな。もうなくす
<笑>あちらさん、盛り上がってきたの。だから、こうなる前に黙らせようと。is it it? Is it gonna derope? Yeah, they certainly are. それを生産しようってんなら俺たちは真っ向から受け止めて叩き潰さなきゃなんねえインドを渡すってのはそういうことだ今ここでそんなまねえ俺ら以外の誰にできるふん用心棒の言う通りやわしらあいつら力でねじ
Alright guys, you take care of it, right? You guys got this? You guys got this. I believe in you. That was a bad challenge. I have no more health to challenge. Uh, let's let's uh let's throw back these uh senbeis, right? Wow, zero recovery on whiff. Zero recovery on whiff. Yeah, I am spamming the heck out of that. Uh, where's the other guy at? There you are. Come here. Instant, instant, uh, input read right there. I just lost all my life because he decided to aim at the farther target. Dragon engine for you. Instantly aim at the guy that's furthest away from me. I thought that was a bow. Yeah. Three three hits to the back because of incorrect targeting. Kiruza, Achi this. I took a home no honey. I should get hit so Kiri Tskio Yanaika. Kiri Shishita. Oh, do it. What do I? This is where we leave our uh, peeps. こっちは俺らで十分や。ザコは任せとけ。あいつはお前の客なんやろ。なら。お前の手で直接インドを渡してやれ。きっちり思い知らせてこいや。わかった。ここは頼んだぜ。初対面のあんたたち。<笑> Even though we just met. I got us gangueno. Classic. Classic. Leave your posse behind. Hiromano. Kono Basho ni suata monga. Nihon no yakuza no jote ni tatsu. Koko de hanas koto ba hitotsu de. So, um, another legacy blurb here, probably. Um, this framing uh, happens historically all the time where you have a guy who is going after the power and wielding a sword. Uh, this throws back to two places, uh, Aizawa, which is Yakuza 5 Remastered, and also uh, Ryuji Goda. And Ryuji Goda is actually referenced a couple times already in this game. We haven't gone through all of Akame stuff yet, but Ryuji Goda was an Omi alliance as well, and this setup is very similar. He also had a sword, and I'm guessing it might be two phases. He'll ditch the sword at some point, and there will be fisticuffs to cap off, which is uh very similar to Aizawa, which was also Omi alliance. Aizawa was like a Tojo guy, but it, it was ultimately an Omi Alliance re related thing. So they're both very similar. This is, uh, once again, we're here again with another Omi Alliance. So what he said was very important. It's poetic. Mm. 
せやけど俺らみたいなヤクザやることでしか生きていかれへん連中にはここしかないんや、uh, What he says here, he keeps emphasizing that、uh, he came to this point, right? He rise to this point, and it's the, it echoes the other two as well, specifically Gota and Aizawa. They're, they're both、uh, very similar. ここが生きていくために必要な夢なんや夢か。There's you, m a なんたみたいに、てっぺんとてっぺんとにはわからへんやろな。お前らが勝手に奪っていったもんの大きさが。わかるさ。なんやと。いくら名を消しても。いくら自分を偽っても根は俺も同じてめえより強いやつがいると聞けば喧嘩して倒したくなる自分が一番強いということを証明して勝ち誇りたいそんなもんだせやったらなんで大解散なんぞに低下したんやなんで俺らからヤクザの夢奪ったんや簡単だ。俺らヤクザもんが持っている夢なんてのは、毎日を必死に生きている人たちの夢に比べたら、ゴミみたいなもんだからだ。全部ぶち壊しやお前だけはこの手で始末したるその後は沖縄のガキどもや俺を揺さぶってるつもりなんだろうがお前とはここできっちり肩をつけるどんな小賢しい真似してこようがなはあその言葉全部そっくり返したる何が伝説の極道や全員まとめて首さらしたるわい !I love the little eye, eye spotlights in their eyes on the close-up. Classic. Disarm yet. It's gonna be a scripted disarm for sure. That was cool. Cool. Uh, saw that coming. Armor, no hits done, of course.、Uh, we don't have enough for tiger drop either, so we can't tiger drop. <laughs> Instant armor, so much recovery time for a heavy. This is gonna be a jab fest again. Yep, not enough money. So fast.
That was a jab fest. Disarm? There's a chance this is a disarm, yeah. Alright, now it's fisticuffs. Through the wall. New stage. <laughs> classic. Very, very classic. I wonder if we have objects. Let's see if we can find objects to do some uh, heat actions. It kind of looks like there are some. Like this thing? No. Never mind. Whoa, that advance. Holy. a counter. Too far. Buffered too hard. That hit stun is 8 billion years. Holy. Just getting knocked once. I traded there. What the heck? Rearm? Man, I wasn't expecting that. This is echoing Aizawa's fight. Okay. Do I have weapons? You bet your balls I'm spamming that button. So much HP, what the heck? Hit stun is 8 billion years, man.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Targeting. Oh no! Dude. One one stun. Eternity. Absolute eternity. That was a cool catch. Disarm again. Nice. change Ooh. this is going the distance music change the music tempo is changing so good He has super armor. That track so long. No, you don't. That is so cheap. That 360. Don't give me that crap about 360 jabs. All positive frames. Freaking, freaking non stop positive frames. Oh. There it is. The double punch. The headbutt, huh? <sighs> so intense. Oh, 
こっちの勝ちや。ええー、勝負やったな。うん。褒めたるわ。行くで。もうここでやれることはない。うわ、だせえ。Let me guess. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I do have to say something about Hanawa. I think I know who Hanawa is now. And、uh, Akame. Most definitely Hanawa, specifically though, more so him. He is the new Date. <laughs> like, someone's missing right here, right? Someone is missing in the Kiryu Saga game. And that's Date. So he's Date s o n more or less. I mean, he is an agent, you know? So, I mean, police officer, journalist, you might as, you might as well. So he's like taking place of Date. He just shows up. It's like, hey,、uh, you need a ride? I'm surprised he didn't show up in a, a helicopter. <laughs> Anyways,、uh, just for the legacy peeps, right? Mata, what does the son of Atarashi Kigai want to take that? 本当に気が引くな。I swear, Akame is just immune to violence or brutality or injuries. <laughs> oh, it's Yoshi. Oh, his name was Yoshi. たかが極度にしちゃ大したもんだ。個人的にはこのままぶっ殺してやりたいとこだが、いいエージェントになるから生かしとけだとさ。Looks like Yoshi finally showed up again. これから一生きっちり首ははめてやるからな。安心しろ。西谷も一緒だから寂しくねえぞ。うん。Twenty twenty。だだだ、twenty twenty。So、uh, let's keep track. I think 2020、uh, is t just saying sometime in 2020. It's,、uh, it's around the same time still. It wasn't like a, a vast amount of time ahead or before. It's interesting, isn't it? サトリエの道は遠く険しい<笑>たまには一息入れるのもいいでしょうどうもここで悟りを開けるとは思えませんね<笑>これは手厳しい新しい仕事かいえあなたはもう少しほとぼりを冷ました方がいいでしょうから大阪に続き横浜でもご活躍したばかりです。まあ、そうだな。伝説の理由が後継者に選んだのは。Oh, okay. So that's how they did it. Ah,、uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So this is the other scene. I was curious if they were going to do this scene. Like, what happens if you lose the fight? Because technically,、uh, Kiryu relents in the fight with Casca. So they did it in. On reflection, I see. So, y e a so y e a k a r e a a n a t a to Dokoka n i t e i r i g a s h i m a s Okay, Sto no Zumio Kabute, Kemuso ni Hait Tari Suru a t a r This was a great scene. Yaksa no Oyege, Yaksa like a dragon. Fans will probably remember the dragon, the symbolism. Asuka officially ascends to dragonhood. 
あの合同解散の後結果的にあいつが背負っちまった重荷を少しだけ軽くしてやりたいと思ったあなたが働きかける前彼は出所したてのヤクザ崩れでしかありませんでしたそんな男が権力に溺れる青木亮を止めるまでになったんです大道寺、like、としても青木の独走は見過ごせないところでした So these are recaps of Yaksa Like a Dragon, and now I understand why they wrote 2020 dot dot dot. They're trying to say that enough time passed that now we're after the events of Yaksa Like a Dragon. So it's further down the line, but still around the same year. Like it's still around the same time. It's just now all the stuff that happened, we're finally to the current day. So, this would be the most recent scene before Infinite Wealth. Anata no Atoshi ga nakereba, kitto, Kasuga no Katsuyaku mo nakatta no dewa. Ore ga aitz o tsuyoku shita wake jane. Tsuyoi aitz ni, tama tama ore ga meguri atta. Sore da ke no koto da. Shikashi desu ne. さっきから何が言いてんだそろそろ本題に入れよ。用があってきたんだろおっと、そうでした。大道寺からあなたの今回のローをねぎらいたいと、褒美が出されました。うんあなたの功績は大きいですよ。前にも言いましたね。何せ500億の利権です。ついでに、私個人としては命も救われている。それを仮のままにしておくのはあまり気持ちいいものじゃありませんそこでまずはこれをお見せすることにしましたハルトハルト,ハルト初めて見るでしょうそこは沖縄のあなたのお墓です、oh. 我々の隠しカメラが撮影していましたあの、キリュウカズマの大事な子供たちを感謝するために、その日はあなたの命日でした。There is Haruto and Haruka. Oh, this must be the crying scene from the trailer. いい盛りです。Yeah. カメラが遠いのは我々の監視がバレないためにもあす。最後にお参りしている二人は太一君と綾子さんです。Dude, I, I'm telling you that my hot take.、Uh, Yaksa, like,、uh, no, like a dragon nine, the nine kids, man. Maybe excluding Haruka and adding Haruto instead. Like the nine kids. That's it. It's like a dragon nine. And then they、uh, released Kiwami 3, but right、uh, half a year or maybe a year before、uh, Like a Dragon 9 and announced that they released Kiwami 3 because they want you to get to know all the kids all over again and then have a game that features only the kids. But Kiryu is still dead, right? Kiryu is still dead to them. So he, he's gone. So he doesn't have to show up, but in Kiwami 3, it would be like, like a Dragon Gaiden. I, I'm telling you, such a good setup. They keep flashing the kids. They haven't decided who their voice actors are because you only hear a few voice samples. And I think they're kind of different. I'm not sure if Tai Chi, the one that showed up, is the same one. So technically, they can recast. I don't know if they're going to change the look of the kids. Or not, because they have very characteristic looks. And they, you kind of want actors, they like the actors' resembling,、uh, resemblance. But man, I'm telling you, it's, it's a great idea. Do it. Sorry. Sorry for my personal, personal、uh, blurb right there. I can just see it. I can imagine the game. Anyways. I mean, or on top of Casca, you know, like do a Casca, keep the Casca stuff going, but 
Ooh. Sidetrack to the kids in Okinawa. Tokoroga Kodato. Lenzuga Hanshash de Shimatanoga. Ayako Sanga Kamera ni Kizui de Shimimas. Aichi and Ayako. Kore Kamera Tayone. Oh, so me die. So they both have voice actors. And they, wow, they really, uh, did, uh, their, their character models. Yeah, man, Taichi is even older now, looking, and so is Ayako. I'm telling you. おじさんのお墓に向いてる隠し取りしてんだ多分俺たちのことじゃあもしかしてこれ おじさんがやっぱり死んでなかったとしたらそうかもなやほおじさんあんた何やってんのだってこれおじさんが見るかもしんないんだろ別にいいじゃんねおじさん俺のことわかる太一それにあやこ姉ちゃんこっちはみんな元気はるか姉ちゃんもはるともねうん they're different voice actors i i'm pretty sure i i unless the voice actor's voice tone was deliberately changed for the thing but taichi definitely sounds a little bit different so it's hard to pin down if it's the same one just from hearing it. I feel like it's a different voice actor. Leaves leaves room open for all the other kids. All the other kids don't have samples, actually. It's largely just Tai Chi a lot of times. And Aiko. Uh, Ayako. Shiro and Izumi are Koji, Mitsuo, Ryo, and Eri. They're all good, and... Riona, <laughs> no one believes he's dead, of course. Nice. Nani <laughs> <笑>私はね小さな会社でジムやってるちゃんと就活も頑張ったんだコーチもサラリーマンになったリオナはアパレル業界エリは今保育士目指してるえ、it's <笑> <笑>今、やんちゃなんだよね。目離すとすぐどっか行っちゃって。春香姉ちゃんと優子さん困らせてる。きっと何か事情があるんでしょう。生きてたら絶対俺たちに会いに来るもんな。もし本当にこれを見
じゃあねおじさん<笑>あいにくカメラは現地のエージェントがすぐに取り外しました監視対象にバレた以上妥当な判断です<笑>そうだなあ,あ,あなたにこの映像を見せることが果たして褒美になるのか検討をしました<笑>いや見せてくれた感謝する太一君はさっきあなたに渡したいものがあると言っていましたね隠しカメラを回収した翌日その場所へ朝顔の子供たちがやってきて絵の入った筒を置いていきましたですが死んだはずの桐生一馬が絵を持ち帰ったと思われるわけにはいきませんそこで現地のエージェントは中の絵を撮影だけして元に戻しておきました They updated the morning glory picture. Haruto drew a picture. Anata de Shoka. Dang. Who my head? Haruto. Miro. You'll say, you know. もう字が書けんのか最後に会った時あいつはまた喋れもしなかったのなのに、yeah, it's been three years. 立派にやってますよはるかさんも他の子たちもまったくだあいつらはとっくに自分の足で立って歩いてる。なのに俺が一人で。寂しいって。口に出すことさえできずにいた。こばなれてきてなかったのは。俺だけだった。男の子が何かあった時最初に勇気を出して動ける人間になりたいと言ってました子供たちにとってあなたはそういう人間だったんですね今の俺には耳の痛い言葉だここで座禅する以外やることもねそういえばあなたには花輪さんが休暇で旅を進めてましたなもう上にも話は通ってますよ休暇の期限は決まっていませんその気があるならぜひただし誤解のないように桐生一馬の死はこれからも貫いていただきますどこへ行こうと我々の組織があなたから目を離すことはありませんもう修行は終わりか<笑>私もこの寺も形ばかりのものですお望みなら修行はどこででもできますよお行きなさいハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイでハワイ
Meritocracy. That's an aptly way to honor Japanese as his, uh, the Japanese history. Meritocracy. ああ、だからといってなれ合いはしない。その点花川君はよく飽きまいてんだろう。もちろんです。偽名の身分証、クレジットカードなど意識揃えておきました。手前を取らせたな。一派からの許しが出たというだけのことです。あなたとはあくまで管理する者とされる者友人にでもなったと勘違いされては今後に支障を来します。ああ、俺とあんたはそれでいい。上流では偽名に不向きです。勝手ながら鈴木太一です。<笑><笑> One last joke for the road. Taichi Suzuki. So, Tai Chi is probably uh, in homage to Tai Chi, the kid, right? And Suzuki, of course, it's Suzuki. It, it's a very common name that is used as an alias. I don't know if that's because uh, a Japanese thing at large, but in terms of the RGG verse, Suzuki comes up a lot. And he's taken up the names, family name Suzuki on multiple occasions and many other members have taken up it that name like as a taxi driver it's the most notable would be uh yaksa five when he was a taxi driver and he wanted to disappear too oh wait and i'm pretty sure that's his name his first name as a taxi driver too hold, hold up wait That was his uh, taxi driver name, right? Oh, I forgot his first name. Hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his cab driver name, too. But I'm pretty sure that goes back to Tai Chi as his, uh, the kid as well, uh, the first time. Uh, that that is his old uh taxi ca cab driver name. So Yaksa Five, right on the nose, right on the nose. That was his alias that he chose for himself in Fukuoka. Uh, what was the place? Uh, Nagoshkai? No, no. Uh, what was the Fukuoka location? Yeah. ナゴスカイ。ちょっと起きました。ナゴスカイ。昔この偽名で。There あつみみたいよ。わい。私もあなたと同じなんです。何がだ。あなは新たな人生を手に入れるために。わい。自ら名を消した男の一人。要するにまだまだあなたの知らない秘密があります。Oh no no no. No 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 no. You don't just get to do that. Wait 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 wait. wait. There's no way... Am I missing something? There's no way he showed up in Yaksa 5. That's pretty cool. Actually, that I'm really curious now where how he's connected. I always wanted... Nak uh, I always wanted Nakajima to come back. The, the guy who took him in. The taxi cab driver turn... Like, street racer turn taxi cab driver... Guy, it was like one of the easily, arguably one of the best supporting characters in in like a, a fraction, 
pretty much the length of this, right? And, um, man, if they really connected it back there, that would be pretty cool. Hanawa. What? Wait, was it really obvious who it was? What? Oh, right. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait. No. The VA, uh, the, um, the voice actor. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 I can't. Hold, hold up. Hana was a uh, voice actor, right? Hanawa's uh, voice actor is uh, Hiroki Tochi. Um, okay. Hiroki Tochi. Who, who is he in Yakuza 5? He does sound familiar, but I'm not... No way. So he's the voice actor of Morinaga. Morinaga. If anyone has played Yakuza 5, Morinaga was the guy who like backstabbed and not backstabbed. He he pulled the whole backstab power play and backstabbing and whatnot. But we never knew what happened to him actually. So Aizawa, Aizawa, uh Aizawa claimed he killed Morinaga and buried him somewhere in the mountains but no one knows no one possible so it could be very well be Morinaga that would be absurd but also insane but also very very likely because they share the same voice actor <laughs> it all goes back to that would be nuts wow so there's so much layer here because Morinaga actually backstabs Kiryu. Uh, and then he like befriends Kiryu, backstabs him, and then he disappears. Just gone. Like in his chapter after Fukuoka. So dude, no way. That's pretty freaking awesome though. So what did they do? Did they touch upon all of the events? I think the only thing they didn't touch upon is Yaksa 4. So they did 0, 1, 2, 3 for sure. And then you have 6, right? 6 and 7, which is the bridging ones, the, the ones flanking this. So everything except 4. 4 was the um uh the police thing and the rubber bullets uh and the power play on organized uh the kind of touch for cuz they it, it's the f 3k stuff is kind of related to that but nothing direct to how or um Hideo was more of a uh throwback uh, it would have to do with something with, like, Mine, or not Mine, um, Hamazaki. So there was no throwback to Hamazaki. Yeah, not really. I guess you have Saijima and Saijima there. Anyways. Maybe? Morinaga? Possibly? That's crazy. That's, that's, you don't just do that. Why do you do that at the end? Oh my gosh. Anyways. So you Hanashini Mon Narta. You can't just say things like that. <laughs> this in this game series, you can't just say things like that. And leave it at that. Uh -huh. We saw this in the trailer. 
It was at the Multiple. end of the game. Is that where the credits roll? Okay, hold on. Just in case, I always do this before the credit rolls. Um, sometimes credits feature um, music that may potentially be copywritten. So I want to... I like to typically take in the music the first time, see if it's copywritten. So just take it in. If it's muted, it's fine. Just wanted to give a heads up because I usually don't say much during the credits. want to take it all in. Um, that last scene, oh my gosh. The oneers, I, I think this format where it's very short and condensed and then you have the oneers, they hit so hard. I still would trade it off though. I still would trade off the oneers for like huge long build up. Like I'm all for the long game. I love the menacing brutality, the tense build up constantly. But they these they're really good at oneers now where if the game is really confined, um they know how to get you on all the like stuff like the uh, betraying to betray which another layer all all of that was condensed so nicely and then that last scene that's that's the melodrama and i feel like uh even newcomers could kind of feel the potential pain but it's not even close if you've played the games so that legacy scene that must be where most people mentioned that they teared up like i I was, I was crying inside, and I was like starting to tear up. It it was insane, as so deep. And they ended up doing what I was teasing, what I think is a hot take. They quickly just rattled off what all the other kids were doing. Uh, Mame was not mentioned explicitly, but Mame is the dog. Uh, it's a dog you rescue in Yakuza Three. Um, that allowed, I think it was Izumi. Pretty sure it, uh, I think Izumi, oh no, no, Izumi is the youngest. It's the second youngest. Uh, it's not Riona. Riona is the popular girl. But one of them became a dog, like an animal groomer. One worked in business, right? They, they mentioned a lot of things. Uh, Ashiro, of course, went into science because he's the kid with the glasses. Heck, like there was so many already like yeah because they're all uh in adulthood now like uh they're all young adults pretty much all of them are uh the vast majority of them are 18 plus so uh the next game right the next game is going to take place probably two or three years after um, generally, um, the timeline of these games tend to be two or three years because that's how the development cycle works too. And they like to take their, they like to plan for a game that's coming out two or three years later, and they write it in that line where it's the year. So the most recent game, Lost Judgment, was in 2022, and Infinite Wealth is likely either 2022 or 2023. So it's three years from this game which is also two or three years from the most recent this timeline. Lost Judgment is in a different timeline. At least that's what we're made to believe. Uh, man, that last scene was so tough. And we're going to see it again. See it again in maybe a week or two in English. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but now we're going to move on to our completionist stuff. But meanwhile, I'll let the credits roll because these absolutely require iteration. Because they've been, the vast majority of the credits have been here for the whole time. Just, just let it set in, you know, over 10 years plus of legacy on all the people here. Uh, outside of uh, a few notable mentions, we've mentioned a bunch because uh, a bunch of times already because of their recent departure. But the vast majority of people have been working on this in this series for a really long time, especially the actors. So let's let the credits roll.
and confirm 2023 three years later oh my gosh i wasn't expecting a post credit scene i'm not ready for this hold up and then we we have to remember there's also this unlocks the the like the demo for uh like a dragon infinite wealth um i don't think the previous track was um muted so there it's very unlikely but amazing grace wonderful like uh if there's anything that's incredibly recognizable and so appropriate that orchestrated version of amazing grace at, at least i think that's the title of the like the piece but the only thing i recognize like the amazing grace part it's so good it hits so well that transition into it like um it it's incredibly symbolic it, it's a great american piece to kind of marry the two and also uh something about the credits that i notice um i have to like uh, kind of add up to the thing because i wasn't sure who was doing the music uh at the time but it looks like it's largely all the gang like it wasn't just aoki um aoki is the most like name that i bring but i saw zenta uh 86 or 87 keys or uh, i saw keys and then like these are familiar names uh, high lunch or heat lunch um so all the, your classic like people who make music for this game um they were sprinkled along and i also noticed that the story advisor is not who i thought it was so there's a story advisor that the name is different i um so i'm not sure if it's furuta if he was involved in so it's very difficult to know who is doing the writing but there was a lot of names so there's a lot more writers and uh yeah so i'm not entirely sure um i it's probably all of the above but still um it's not just furuta so some of the stuff that i was thinking like oh yeah this kind of feels like this guy furuta san um maybe there's like it's a it's like a touch and go kind of deal and also i noticed there's like four different teams for uh performance capture or mocap motion capture there was like a facial team a drama team like a drama scene team there was also stunt coordinators for the uh like capture for the action stuff uh, it, it was a lot it was a th almost like a third of or two-thirds of the team um so kudos to them because holy heck that last scene with kiryu man it was crazy but even the music choice um i don't know who sang the i didn't quite i i didn't get the chance to pick up what that last song was the one before the amazing grace thing oh so good all right let's see i i'm so this is possibly uh sometime during the events of infinite wealth because i imagine he is already here so he's already in the neighborhood so this is before Casca somehow gets dumped <laughs> onto the shores of honolulu city right in hawaii so or maybe a little before we we I would like to think he's he's already here before Casca at some point. So let's see it. He made it to the church. And his new look, of course. First time in over 10 years. But first time in over like 30 years of his life, I guess.
No words have to be said. To be continue, all right. Dot dot dot. <laughs> uh. Yep, premium adventure. Sure, right. All right, I have to go to the bathroom before we do a little bit more. I want to like start doing Akame stuff. Be right back. finished busy crying crying in the bathroom right I'm all composed can't can't let anyone see me crying right I, I, I'm just kidding by the way uh hold up oh wait we should do this no no no, no. we'll end the day with this actually the Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth Special Trial? Yeah, 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 let's do this. Now that we unlocked it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dude. That's such a tease. And I love it. I love the lighting. This is such a good uh, representation. Where you see the red meets the blue. And then Casca's lit from the top right because he's the... It's very, and uh, Kiryu is cast in the shadow with the bounce light from the red. That's that's so beautiful right there. All right, we'll try the special version, see what we can glean from it, and then that's then we'll go into completion uh, another time. Yeah, this is perfect. I totally forgot that I just mentioned it. All right, let's go. Wait. Oh, okay, okay. This might be a... Uh... Wait, 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 hold up. It, it loads into a different thing. We're gonna need to uh, capture this. So give me a sec. We're waiting for it to load. I wonder if... It's a come on as a... It looks like it's coming on as a full screen, so I didn't know it, how this is going to work, but it kind of looks like it's being executed as a separate, um, separate program. So let's give it a...
the audio might be loud. So actually, maybe I'm gonna mute the audio, the feedback from the desktop too, because I don't know if it's gonna operate on the same one. Oh, interesting. Okay, uh, I know you can't see anything right now, but you get to choose Japanese, English, or Chinese. Oh, this or Chinese. Okay, uh, I know you can't see that right now, but it's allowing you to choose between audio languages and it shows Japanese, English, and Chinese. Yo, does that mean I'm going to play through Infinite Wealth three times? Uh, any, anyways, uh, we're going to choose Japanese, but this is probably where some of the, like, the criticisms were coming from, which I'll talk to you about later. But let's use Japanese. One, one second. It's really loud. So I need to uh, set all the stuff. I didn't realize it was going to. It was going to be like a different setup. Like all, all the. Ow. Hold up. Hold up. I need to get to the options. One second. I made the right call to uh, mute the stuff. It is so loud. Give me a sec. I almost got it. All right. All right, let me. There we go. So I know this is uh going to be like uh and here's the sound, sorry, down alert. So, um, so it started up a different program and it had its own options and whatnot. And it looks like there's a story demo and a, and like maybe the Honolulu City demo. The juxtaposition, right? Uh, let's look at game settings for a moment. We have battle speed, yeah, action prompts. Game settings are quite, so you have all of them, right? Yes, even the subtitle stuff and the speaker name and all that stuff. So they, all that stuff carries over, which is nice. Even in the demo, interestingly enough. All right. So there's three. Look at this. Where is this? Uh, oh, it doesn't say. Oh, I was kind of hoping. Oh, it doesn't, it actually doesn't say. Okay, so there are three tracks. I'm curious if there's a Chinese track because I will play Infinite Wells MSQ three times over, probably, if uh, there are three tracks, no exceptions. Um, I love language in all its glory. And if they cast a Chinese cast, I will definitely go through it in Chinese as well. Or I'm assuming Mandarin. Um, possibly, yeah, it, it's probably Mandarin. Anyways. Uh, let's look at the story demo. Man. <gasps> oh, nice. Well played. The story demo is right where the end, the uh, after credit scene ended. Huh. Well played. More <laughs> Sunao ni kansha dekitan da na. Hawaii de no nimu da kara. 
わざわざあなたをアサインしたんですそれだけで十分感謝してもらいたいものですね。Please still contact with Hanua? の用事は済みましたかああ。結構。あとは任務に集中できますね。状況はまだ下準備って段階だ。町の情報通何人かに接触して渡りはつけた。そいつらからの情報待ちだ。いい手際です。あなたに頼んだのは正解だったようだ。今のところは。あんたは相変わらず、一言余計だ。例の人物の捜索、くれぐれもよろしくお願いしますよ。では。I imagine that person is Casca or someone like Casca or someone connected to Casca. That reveal. Ah, it has the little like loading things that's inherited from Yaksa like a dragon. Wow. Dang. This is ah.、Uh, January is right around the corner, man. Right, one of the informants might have gone, might have gone something. The meeting place is a bit further east. I should go and ask. Oh my gosh, I see, <laughs> I see American things. <laughs> Even if it's Hawaii. Oh, their audio is so much quieter. The, the mixing is so much quieter in game than it is for the cutscene. Interesting. That might. Hopefully, that gets normalized. I think overall the mixing was good in Gaiden. That's our boy. <laughs> Keister. Keister caring. Tattoo. Tattoo on the back. The giveaway. その脱走犯の背中にはそれはそれはご立派なタトゥーが入ってたんだとねタトゥー何でもよドラゴンなのに尻尾が魚みたいになってるってヘンンペコなデザインだったってさあったリンゴみてえだなご祝儀も受け付けるぜ調子に乗るなそいつの行方はうん、怖アートウォールズあたりで目撃情報があったって話だよアートウォールズだな分かったまたのお越しをアートウォールズ I personally have not been to Hawaii so What? Well looky here <clears throat> Hello there, buddies. <laughs> A cover charge? <sighs> Come on, man. Okay. Your fate misses me all. Okay, soon now. Right,、uh, this is the new system. I, I love that they're using.、Uh, now they're using tactical strategy game. Uh. 
a tactical strategy game elements uh, on top of the JRPG elements. So usually when you have bubbles, circular bubbles and movement, movement within the turns, it requires a amount of like fixed action points and action points determine how action points. I don't know what they call this or what they're subscribe um, prescribing, but the field of movement is probably a parameter to the character. It might be fixed, who knows, but it's a, uh, this is uh, one of the elements that make things like XCOM to shout outs to XCOM devs, right? Um, uh, one of the things that tactical strategy games have dynamically introduced over the years. So popularized by quite a lot of other ones, but XCOM has done it on a grid for movement, but there are like other things they use this type of system as well. Um, in the Japanese side of things, there are many tactical strategy games that implement something like this now. And this being a 3D game, a representation is pretty, pretty nice. So now you can like, uh, you can move within its action. So, is it just striking with tag? You can pick up nearby, yeah. And it allows now to freely pick up the uh, environment, environment positioning, which is great because uh, before it was very happenstancy. And you can stance change between what looks like uh, the Dragon of Dojima icon, the beast mode, that's beast stance, and then a rush stance maybe. Yep. And they have their parameters, yep. They have their movement parameters. Beast has the lowest amount of positional movement. Dragon Dojima is... Yeah, and this is rush, so... Dragon and Dojima is the brawler stance between the two. And then Rush would have the highest. Which makes sense. Um, what else we got? Stylized UI. Absolutely welcomed. Like, look at that stylization. That That is uh, most definitely... So all the text is very clear. So they use uh, solid fonts. So there's no like curly fonts and all that stuff, which is great. And they both have Japanese and the English, right? As well as uh, the portraits are stylized. And then all the text and stuff are kept, the font size and text are still kept consistent, which is excellent. I think this is the quote unquote gold standard popularized by a lot of things now. You use standard font that's easily readable and then you complement it with shapes and stuff that are very functional and then color code everything as well so excellent very impressive uh or at least homework what does let's flee skills let's see what skills do so he has essence of tanfa golly sticks okay these are all classics homaki pupil Come on. Rage and guaranteeing a critical if the action prompt is successful. Okay. Bleed. Lower defense. Fair enough. Let's try this. Is there a range? There's no range. Oh, okay. There's also, there, there's some positioning stuff. And then I wonder if you can be too far away. Come on, let's go. Oh my gosh, that timing is so weird. Yeah, I remember I had to get used to this. Yeah, it's fighting styles, very no. Brawler, yeah, brawler, rush, beast. Okay, fair enough. And then last stand is the showcase. It allows him to uh, do the most famous thing Kiryu does, which is freely bashing the crap out of things. So, and it's activated by right trigger. Okay, fair enough. Like this. 
It's so cool. <laughs> it's so good. It's such a great representation, and it breaks the fourth wall by breaking the UI. And the American dollar sign. There it is. USDs. 20 bucks. They only had 20 bucks on them? What the heck? <laughs> My bad, man. <laughs> nice little distraction. Okay, so there is, I, I can see a limitation here. Uh, foliage, right, the trees and stuff, is still a little tough. I, I think uh, it's still a little one of the weaker sides of um, the in-game, the dragon engine. The dragon engine still is, you can see the rudimentary lighting interactions with foliage. So like trees, grass, and stuff. And I I'm... I haven't been to Honolulu City or Hawaii, but I imagine there's probably very strategic trees everywhere. And you can see that there is some lighting. It leaves a little bit to be desired when you saw the car leaving and then you saw how the trees are lined up. So that's kind of a limitation, but it's understood until they like refine you know, redo or upgrade their engine to include reflections on certain things. Uh, organic life is tough. Um, their buildings and stuff and like object stuff is pretty, pretty on point, but definitely not necessarily very curvy things like trees and grass. Water, moving water can be a little tough. But they uh, are very strategic about placing moving water. So, anyways, just a little. And I don't imagine it's going to change from here till the release product, right? The product is pretty much set in stone at this point. Yeah, it's so much louder. I like to. This has been a common, for, for me, have been a common issue, uh, personally, where the EQ for the cutscenes are higher than the EQ for the in-game voice acting. So, um, and the options don't really have, a, like, I fiddled with it a couple times in previous titles. I don't know if it's going to change this time. I'll, I'll try to tweak it when uh, time comes, like January, when it, at the actual game. But right now, the cutscenes are mixed higher than they are for the end game, even though you're equating the master volume down so that it doesn't blast my ears. That was Casca. We saw this scene teased. <laughs> Like Freeze. the end. Yeah, right here. This very scene. Hold it. Tuck. Hamano e you got nani at tender. Araka must make a night or so. She says she will dinner, Casca. Yeah, it's about like 10% quieter. When they're not yelling. <laughs> もう
あいにくだがお前じゃないあそうですかでもならなんで俺をその人探しの最中にお前によく似た日本人の情報が入ったなまさかとは思ったが駆けつけてみたらご覧の通りというわけだそういうことかそれでお前はなんでハワイにうーんそれがどこから話し合いいんだかキリュウさんアカネさんって覚えてますか荒川のおやさんの恋人でつまり俺の母親かもしれない人。Oh, yeah, that's right. そんな名前だったっけな。We got teased at. Akane is here. アラカワタニにお前を産んですぐに殺されちまったと。まあ、親さんが俺の実の親とは決まっちゃいないんですが、そのアカネさんです。担当直入に言うと、アカネさんが実は生きていて、今、ハワイにいるらしいんです。なんだってアカネさん、お体が優れないとのことで、元気なうちに息子を、まあ、一旦俺ってことになりますけど、一目会いたいと。そうだったのか。それで、こっち着いてすぐアカネさんの家に行ったんですよ。行ったんですけど、ただでさえ道中いろいろあったってのに。家にアカネさんはいなくてですね。Lots of new c h a r a c t e のジョーちゃんがいたんですよ。それで、どうも俺はそのジョーちゃんにはめられたらしいんです。はめられたそうなんですだから、俺は殺にとっつかまっちまったんですよ。Yeah. a s k a is also the like constitutively nice guy, so it's. You get into trouble. I, I think he's even more so than Kiryu. Sumanga Sapari Hanashiga no Mikomene. Deshone Nakitrani Hachide Satsmo Tobi Kirino Xero de Interesting Cotoni Tint Mimio Cashine Dagara Solete Dasoka. Oh, my well, Huntoni. トラブルメーカーってやつだな。<笑>トラブルメーカー。ま、詳しい話はまた今度聞かせてくれ。それで、お前はこれからどうするんだそうっすね。とにもかくにも、もう一遍、アカネさんの家に行かねえと。アカネさんが戻ってるかもしれないし、あのジョーちゃんに話を聞かねえと。そうか。場所はわかるんだよな。えええ、いっぺん行ってますから、だいたい道順は。えもしかして送ってもらえるんですか一応お前は今、脱走犯なんだぞ。一人で町をぶらついてたら、またと捕まる。本当に何から何まで<笑>肩もみましょうか<笑>ジコールからやめてくれ。I'm already loving it. <clears throat> How much are they gonna show?、Huh. Huh? Okay. Wait, we're already. We're not already here, right? <sighs> He's a little car sick? Wait. What? Oh, that's right. Oh no. Oh no. This is the big C. Not, not C for car, but C for big C. Hello. How about we grab something to drink? He helps. <laughs> Alright. Oh, ABC store. I feel like, man, is it just me or 
after seeing uh, after f uh, seeing uh, Kiryu for a while and um, and uh, Yagami, is it just me or Costco's got some hips? <laughs> Sorry, Costco. All right. Uh, math features. Uh, oh wait. Let's see how big this is. This is just one area, by the way. <clears throat> oh hey, the vocational school is here. I didn't think. Uh, you know what? I'm kind of curious. I should ask uh, someone I know if this is a thing. If the uh, Ouna bought a vocational school thing in Hawaii. Anaconda Arcade. There's some darts. Ana's coconut juice stand. Soleil? Oh my gosh. Why? Maybe this was a bad idea. <laughs> 88 teeth, vivid bowls, seaworthy. This is a bad idea. I'm gonna be thinking about this the whole time as well. Uh. Okay. Okay. Morning Joes. Nothing I recognize as part of the, like, the, nothing for me, like, from the mainland, right? From the East Coast, but I imagine uh, I could get some commentary from individuals from Hawaii. Creamberry, Waikiki, Pizzeria Felis. Wait, is Mom is Mama Masala's like a? a is it a Cody house? It is a Cody house. Yeah, it's like masala, as in like Indian cuisine. Oh man. Oh man. Kevin's hot dog. Oh man. Ugh. It's time to book a flight to Hawaii, huh? This is probably where you get the acai bowls. Yeah, acai bowls. Whenever you see bowls. That's all I can think of. Oh my gosh. Shaved ice. What kind of restaurant is this? This is... Yeah, I, I thought it kind of sounded Frenchy. Okay. Ocean Boys. Cocktails? Fair enough. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> yeah, so trees are kind of tough, but they're doing the best. Like, look at that. It's pretty, pretty good. Like these tree textures, pretty, pretty good. Man. Man. Shake? Coconut? Pineapple. <laughs> Just pineapple? I can't tell the difference between, like, I, I don't actually, I'm not a botanist or anything, so, not even a chef. So I don't really know the difference between a coconut tree and a, and a pineapple tree. I wouldn't be able to expect that pineapples were gonna fall from these trees. Oh, uh, incendiary, uh, incendi incendiary grenade all just happens to be on the floor, right? Man. I'm looking at the NPCs right now. Because now we're in a different light, right? So the profile is going to be different. The profile of the NPCs 
You're probably gonna find more mix. Still not as, uh, it's not as dramatic. It's still a mix. Unlike if they pick some something from here, from East Coast. Come on! All right, all right. What is that? Can you interact with trash? You most certainly can. A dinner plate. Nice. Bugs. Herbalism. Coffee. Old. Fry calamari. Sear tuna. Just shrimp. <laughs> you have shrimp as a side in a cafe? What the heck? Dude, why is that? <laughs> oh, it, 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 it could possibly be like a... Is that a rooster? Oh my gosh. Ender, how are you? This is a throwback to Yaxa like a dragon. He's gonna befriend some roosters. Dang. Man. Alright. Oh my gosh. Dude. Did they... I'm seeing if they got... No, they did not. So they didn't get licensing for cars, which it is a big deal. Like, what I mean is, it's an expensive big deal. So, uh, this says, like, S11. S11, S11 Raptor. That's obviously fictional, right? And the design is kind of interesting. I know a little bit about uh, modern car designs. By little, I mean at least gather what this is. It's almost like a bigger budded S-series Honda, really. But then it has like a little bit of like uh, BMW A4. Is what I'm thinking of. Convertible. I mean, the front kind of reminds me more of a Mercedes S-Class. Eh, it, it's like a, uh, it's a Frankenstein car. A Frankenstein car because of licensing. Like this. Hatchback. Oh, the front is very different from the back. Pickup trucks. We gotta have our pickup trucks, right? That's definitely no... It's like a combination of either a Dodge Ram or an F-150, but it's kind of hard to tell. It's just combining all the pickup trucks. Yeah, they don't have licensing for these things. That was kind of curious. Oh? Is it just grabbing off the floor? A 10 cent? Dude, a dime? You have no idea. That's... It's so impactful for someone, for a legacy player to see a dime. Holy heck. Like the parking lot, like the, the way parking lots are done here. The seating, the like these garbage receptors, like these containers. They're just screaming Americana, even though I've never been to Hawaii. Um, there are very standard, like, public things. How public things are done that are very iconically, uh, recognizable to an American. Just how things are situated, like the power grid stuff. <laughs> street lights, traffic lights, street signs. I, I'm learning, um, in a way, I'm also learning a lot about Hawaii because um, it's not that, like I don't even know what that building is, but it's got to be something very, very important because look at that building. It's fantastic. It's a modern marvel, practically.
but I have no commentary on it. So this is just as refreshing to me as anyone else. Outside of the Americanisms, like these things. You know what I don't see though? And I'm not sure if it's true or not. Is uh, rental scooters. I guess they didn't make their way over to Hawaii. This is a metropolitan area, so I would imagine there's some sort of rental scooters. <laughs> I could I could get lost in making commentary about Americanisms forever. I don't think we'll ever be able to play finish this game <laughs> when it comes out. Like uh, culturalism? There's so much culturalism I can uh, speak about now, as opposed to like Japan, which it's always at arm's length. I really hope they uh, are brave enough. I, I mean, I'm not from Hawaii, but I would love at my expense, I guess my curiosity is. Um, I hope uh, they're brave enough to take on uh, digging into Hawaiian Hawaiian culture while they're here, or at least uh, something Asian American, some Asian American themes, not just like foreigner Japan foreigner. East meets West, but I imagine that's predominantly what's gonna. Two dollars and thirty cents for an all beef hot dog in 2023? That's wildly affordable. What the heck? One dollar for a hot and fresh coffee? Man, I should move to Hawaii. What the freak? Anyways, let's walk in here. Sorry, I'm just... That's something you don't see every day. I can tell you that. This stuff? This is Hawaii. <laughs> like, without saying much, like, I don't know what Hawaii is, but I can tell you what it's not. <clears throat> right? So, I've been up and down the East Coast and occasionally been to the West Coast. Somewhere in between and whatnot. Not the South, though. I haven't been to like the South, like Georgia, Alabama, and stuff. But this, I can tell you, is not. <laughs> it's not an East Coast thing. <laughs> in the storefront, like a convenience store storefront. Ah, oh, the colors are amazing. It's such a great location. So much color. Um, the only time that it's ever looked like this, like vibrant colors in front of uh, American storefronts, like on the East Coast, it's only during the spring, spring and summer. These are called spring and summer color, color, like seasonal colors, because um, generally speaking, it gravitates more towards like blues and blues and blacks and like muted colors a lot of times at least in the cities here uh, obviously you would get the selection regardless it's just you have to know that storefronts what you put in the front is kind of very telling we got booze I am not great at recognizing bottles so I'm seeing if I recognize any of them no not really um Just taking a, I, I'm taking a trip around here just to see what kind of licensing they got. Like, how far did they go with the licensing? Because now they're outside of Japan, so it's gonna be tough to uh, 
to negotiate a lot of the stuff. So you kind of want to get an idea of what they're going for. There might be something I recognize that is just a facsimile of the product placement. And I don't know what's unique to Hawaii when it comes to convenience store products. Like, I don't see anything familiar. Those nondescript cans could be anything, really. I don't see anything incredibly iconic. Not even like Gatorade. <laughs> There's definitely no Gatorade here or Monster Energy. Or usually these things also have like Yoohoo's or something like that as well. And then like maybe like Muscle Milk or something organic offering. A at least that outside of the local stuff. Like this might be a local convenience store. I don't know if it's in franchise or not. And I don't know if ABC is a reference to a local chain that is renamed for the sake of licensing. Yeah, because I see some energy drinks. Ooh. These guys are just chilling in the back. Do I see Ben and Jerry's? No. Maybe local stuff like Holotop? I see what looks like Hagen Dots, but not really Hagen Dots. Cold. Cold, cold. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> this roll right here, that's most definitely supposed to look like Hagen Dots. Yeah. Um. Interesting. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so many things to look at. I, I don't know if... Uh, ooh. I didn't even look at the UI yet. Ooh. I like that. The little, like, uh, his uh, tattoo on the side. Let's take a look at their UI. That, that freaking smirk on his face he's such a goober okay not too far actually it's not the farthest departure but uh i think the great stuff is um they really got the knack for clarity while being stylized still yeah these icons are still this uh are still the same we're not going to try to, like, nitpick all this stuff. I'm not here to be comprehensive about a game that's around the corner. Right. Wait. Now I really want to know. <clears throat> I really want to ask someone, do they just leave bananas right on the counter? <laughs> right in front of the <laughs> register? Okay. Hello? I love it. I love it already. I love it. Wow. We have bird food now on top of dog and cat food. Uh, my, my brain is uh, going into overdrive right now about infinite wealth. Aww. That looks awesome. A shaka cap? I have no idea what a shaka cap is. Oh, oh, okay. All right, icy mineral water. Uh. Oh. Uh, I I know these things. Uh, I know what a a mushbi is. Uh, a mushbi is uh from, like uh culinary channels. That is most definitely spam, and I love it. I haven't had one myself. I made one before where you uh, 
take a uh, sushi rice uh grill the spam like sear the spam and then wrap it in uh seaweed anyways uh well we uh, we were getting tea right thank you I love it I love it I love it I love it all right I love multi-language. It's my lifeblood. So when anyone, like, when people that I know or somebody knows me and tries to connect with me and they talk about, like, having trouble, uh, having feelings and analyzing multiple languages, it's kind of a sore spot for me. Like, I can't empathize with someone who has that type of emotional um emotional bias because like for me my life is surrounded by multiple languages non-stop like i mean i play japanese games right but i don't it's not like i speak english at home i don't even speak mandarin at home but i watch mandarin things i watch french things as well italian cinema german so like i'm always constantly surrounded by different languages and it's so normal it's not as normal to hear everyone speaking the same language at the same time even though i use english as a primary thing um always constantly surrounded by different languages it's the whole thing about being multicultural but i am surrounded which I concede, I'm still vastly surrounded by individuals who cannot, uh, who do, do not share my same uh, fondness of hearing the, like, uh, the ups and downs or the things you like about language or the things you hate. Like, uh, when I find something cringy, it's endearing. It's not off-putting. So when a one language is like cringy in an aspect and another language is not, it's it's an aspect of those languages. So rare um most of the time when I'm since I'm an English speaker and I speak American English, it will attract someone who immediately tries to reach out and says, I have an opinion on a language. Generally it's all of the above for me. Because if you look at me and hear me speak American English, it it is still not normalized typically what what they hear is they hear an american so then they would uh it would normalize that american preference as a share but then that would tell me that they don't see me as in i'm asian asian american so that is a very telltale sign or someone who tells me they prefer the other language, like the foreign language, the Japanese things or stuff, then what it tells me is they don't hear my American English. It's usually one or the other most of the time because it's coming from a perspective that um, it's still homocultural when it comes to languages. You have a preference. It's actually kind of one of the fun, interesting things about human communication where Yes, we argue about the way people look. So you like segregate based on the way people look because there's obvious patterns are different. Like I would be considered an Asian person if I didn't say any words at all, right? And then, and then even deeper than that, what's even more core is that language is inherent outside of, you know, the extraneous circumstances like people who can't speak. So I'm excluding that. But the vast majority of people language takes even more precedence nowadays because you don't necessarily see everyone most of the time it's it's kind of weird but we're talking about the internet platform so you hear the voice the language the communication but not the visuals most of the time so nowadays that type of interaction is the vast majority i would say 80 to 80 uh, percent of the time someone is going to infer something that is dissonant with someone who is speaking American English, who appears like an Asian who grew up in the United States, born and raised in the United States. So 
this stuff here, I'm so overwhelmed. Like, there's so many things that RGG can do in this game. And I'm just, I can't wait. But I have to. It's January 26th, I think. So, anyways. Oh no. Get a little too sauced last night. <laughs> sauced. That sounds like something uh, a California would <laughs> say too. Bruh. Oh no. Bruh. Oh. All right. Oh no, you his boyfriend. Oh no, that's an Americanism. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Chinese, Japanese. <laughs> we don't discriminate. It's a double entendre here, because they don't discriminate because they're violently in, like they're violently towards. It, it, they do, this is, uh, I, I feel there's a talking point here. They don't discriminate as long as they're not Asian. So it is discrimination based on it. Because, like, they don't discriminate between Asians. But they do discriminate that he is a Asian. So it, there's a fine line there. It, it's like a double, double take. A, like a deflection. But at the same time, they're talking about violence. So. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Oh no, kitty you. <laughs> okay. Tag team? Do we get a uh do we get a preview of a dual tech? Get out of my house. <laughs> Multi language. I love it. I love it, I love it. Okay, they have an explainer from Yaksa like a dragon. Basically, uh, Tasuka, uh, they, they look like this is because they're RPG looks. Because um, he sees it through the lens. He, he has hero equipped. That's his hero bat from his first game. And then Kiryu was like, what? Hey, it's just to explain. It's a game mechanic. Wow. You guys need to calm down with your language, dude. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Is this skill set change? No. Video skill set doesn't change. So let's look at the attack animation. Interesting, there's an arrow. Oh, it projects when they're gonna attack. He gets two actions? On rush? Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. That's so cool. What do you have? Mega swing is back. Oh, it has range indicators now. Excellent. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, these are old school. Batbreaker has an electricity quality. Okay. Let's just see what this looks like. Okay. Uh, still a little bit rough on the... Uh, they do include a skyline, like the... 
like the Honolulu City skyline in the back when they're doing these things so it's not like vacant completely but uh still a little barren in the choreo as a as an example not sure if it's consistent the portraits are nice that's stupid smirk oh i do miss casca freaking he's a, he's a derp and i and i like his opposite to uh, Kiryu is always smoldering. Always. <laughs> okay. Uh. Hmm? That's the way to your 100. Deep cuts. Having eaten. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna grab a bite? Nice. Ooh. It's Kiryu's usual spot? What the? Alright. It looks like he spent some time in Hawaii. Is that a Jeep? I mean a not jeep? Hold up. Let's look at this not jeep right now. Yeah, that's definitely a not jeep. It's kind of like a... Like a... Uh, what you call it? A Range Rover mixed with a jeep. <laughs> yeah. More or less. Okay. Oh, now I'm just gonna look at cars too. What the heck? so different uh this is so different but so familiar it's so so familiar like the way uh the way doors are the layouts i mean i don't know what i was expecting uh from hawaii but it, it is it's so uh westernized I might even say Americanized, but I actually don't know what germ, you know, like Western Europe is like either enough outside of like movies and TV shows and whatnot. Yeah, you see some graffiti, some tagging along the walls, right? ATMs on the outside. Parking lots again. <clears throat> All right, walk in here. Yo, Irashai. Oh, Tsureka. Ah, Kuchira Tenchoda. Konomisewa Karaoke Bar Nandaga. Sabirete Karaoke Bar. Yoko's Katunda. サビれてて悪かったな。俺、カスが一番です。キリュさんにはいろいろ良くしてもらってます。カスがさんか。カスがそうブライ。どうぞごゆっくり。はい、喜んで。uh, say similar survive backtrack. A novelty phone booth? Do these things still exist? Yo. Of course, we have firearms on display. Ugh. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Bathrooms, man. The good old U.S. of A. Sorry, Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> oh, we can walk upstairs. 
Oh man, this is some vintage stuff right here. Classic. Pool table? No pool table. Healing. Trash. I, I mean like literally trash. I, I don't mean... Okay. What's in here? I see. Hawaiian lager. I wonder if that's supposed to look like a domestic br brand. Okay. There's gonna be so much of my time. Oh wait, can you? It's five dollars. Wait, 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 wait. We got to, right? Are you serious right now? Yosha, utauze. All right, all right, we gotta do this. <clears throat> oh no, I did the casual. Dang it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. I'll, I'll, uh, make a comment after this. Is there a music video? Come on, music video transition. Do it. They did it. They did it. They did it. They did it. Wait, was the bartender the third guy? Wait, that was 89.9? What the? Oh, yeah, because of casual. Uh, so here's the deal. Here's the deal, right? <clears throat> um, This is a, a legacy thing. So, uh, Nishikiyama... It, uh, for those who played Yakuza 0, right? Nishikiyama and Kiryu used to sing together. And their song that they are going to sing is Judgment. Shinpan. Uh, and we know that Nishikiyama's voice actor... It, I mean, sorry. Kasuka's voice actor is Nishikiyama. So what they did here is incredibly meaningful that... They were able to sing uh, Judgment together because these are the OG, uh, like these two were originally together in the first place. So that was a big deal. But let's, uh, what's the other song? It's not an RPG no, no, song no, no, anymore. No, no, no. Oh, my D pad is acting up again. Oh, it's this one. Okay, I remember this one. From uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. This is the one uh, Jowls. Jowls thing. 
We are lip sync. <laughs> Freaking Gideon still has the classic uh, grandfathered uh, clapping motion. <laughs> By grandfathered in, I mean uh, from previous, from old school. That's a legacy motion. お前はまさにこの野郎メインです。白菜おねぎ豚バラ。どんな馴染みの風味が。トレンフェ。キムチよりも赤い。白は固まる道。腹肉。Yeah, <laughs> there's Chow in the gang. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking goobers. It's obviously an homage to Kiss. So, so All right, all right. You got me on the demo. The jukebox. Yakuza Zero. Oh. Yeah, 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 Yaxa Zero. Uh, that, that settles it. Like, uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to somehow uh, arrange it because uh, I'm pretty sure the CD, there's a CD collection that deals with the uh, Ultimate Edition, and it's $110. I'm, I'm probably gonna end up splurging on the Ultimate Edition early for launch. You got me, RGG. Just take my money. All right. I'm, I'm still on the fence, but uh, <laughs> I, I can't now. <laughs> I already can't. Uh, music's such a big part. Kasuga. Have a drink. So, um, this is survive bar like thing. So now it's called revolve, but survive bar bond interactions and uh, Kitty is a social link now. Hi. おかげさまで。本当すいません。飯までごちそうになっちまって。クラシックカスカ。本当ハワイは飯も酒もうまいや。お気に召したようで何を言った。へえ。いや、地獄に仏とはこのことです。こっち来てからわけわかんないことだら
Kitty is a straight man, and Casca's the funny guy. So take it for what you will. They they complement each other very well. Okay. It's not it's not like like a dragon guy den basically is what I'm saying, and it's very much not like um, Kiryu saga stuff, and it's not like like Yakuza like a dragon. It's both, and that's kind of nice because they balance each other or they complement each other in a way. Kiryu san ni atte shinso ga hotto shite masu. Kasuka's like Kasuka's like feel and lightness and stuff that's absent in the game i just played so uh maybe uh the, some of the akame network stuff will fill in a lot of that but slice of life has been pretty consistent sub story is where it breathes it humanizes the um characters quite a bit we'll see how it goes with the akame stuff <laughs> キリュウさん。この子は必ずお返ししますんで。期待しないで待ってるよ。え、これは口だけじゃないっす。俺だってキリュウさんの力になりたいんす。何でもいいんで、手伝わせてください。わかった。じゃあ頼りにするよ。よ
What you looking at? I'm not looking at anything. I'm looking at my mini map. What if I just don't catch a ride and just run through town, you know? <clears throat> what you looking at? Whoa. Oh, that's his car. Oh, fancy. Okay. Anyways, not, not the car, the location, the hotel. ここ It's so familiar. Like the building. I'm sure we all know this. Yeah. てがかりらしいものはなかった。カスが。何ですか Of course. は、年は取ってるけど、赤根さんだ。キリさん。なんですかこの写真。なんでキリさんが赤根さんの写真を?ですパビウェアエンズ。さっき話したよな。俺今大道寺一派からある人物の発見と身柄の確保を命じられていると
Rosa. Pick up truck. Which happened to leave have keys. Left keys in the ignition. Ignition. お前。富澤だったか。山に<笑> すんませんおい、くんじゃねえって。マジで撃つぞ。お前、ろくな治療を受けてねえだろ。病院行こうぜ。連れてってやるからよ。そんなんで油断するとでも。お前、あの山行ってのと坂月交わしたのか。は、は、それがどうしたってんだよ。突っ返してやれ、そんなもん。親が黒って言えば白いもんも黒くなるのがヤクザの世代だ。けどよ。その分親はこの命預かるにふさわしくなきゃダメだ。お前はあいつに命預けようと思えてんのか。そんなこと。できりゃ苦労しねえよ。け
もしもはないどっちを選ぼうが地獄でも自分で選んだ地獄ならそう悪いもんじゃねえ<笑>はいさーん<笑>くそ。お前ら一人は殺して残りは両手両足へしょっとけ。富澤殺すなよ。後で俺が直接刑事目つけるからな。しかし天じゃねえぞ。かかってきやがれ。よし、やるぜ。おお。やってみんか。やるの。あ、い
I still block with B? Oh my gosh, that was fast. Dang. Uh, oh, I don't have any more skill points. Uh, let's try what this attack looks like. Classic. Um, guess we'll stick with this. Uh, it doesn't really lower it that noticeably. Hero wisdom. Range increases with intellect. Oh, you can still move around after selecting it, I see. Uh, I don't think it's B anymore. Oh, yeah, it is B. Okay, B still works. Oh, follow ups. Uh, let's try Tire Tumbler. <laughs> All right, uh, let's switch to this and see what that attack animation looks like. Oh, combo attacks when they're near each other. Ow. Dang it. It's always a, it's always a challenge. What's your normal animation look like? Oh, it's different now. Combo attack. Oh, proximity bonus. Okay, so there's a modifier for being close. I guess that's the end of the demo. Hmm. So どうやら雲行きが怪しくなってきたみてえだいや。Yeah. Awesome. January 26th. I'll be there. And a hundred and ten dollars. <laughs> it investment. <clears throat> uh, what is this? Let's look at this Hawaii demo. Is it like a mini? Uh, it allows us to interact with some of the mini games. Asuka? Asuka. やっぱハワイの日の出は一味違うね。え。え。Oh, okay. we have some peeps, right? Okay. Oh, come on. I just want to hang out. Get ready. Yeah, yeah. Same, same stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what does the RB mean? Oh, we got our pal mates. Oh, Nancy is here. And Olivia? Oh, no. Oh, 
Nancy's got Olivia. Nice. Um, <clears throat> Charlie. And then uh, Gary. Uh, Gary Buster Holmes has Chitose. Uh, Chitose. With benefits. What the heck? Member rank. Oh, this is a new. There's, oh, you might be able to increase their. Oh, you can increase the Palmate levels. That's awesome. Uh, we'll s uh, yeah, I, I want to see this. Let's, let's see this. This one was teased a little bit already. Ah, <laughs> uh, they changed it up. Delivery. <laughs> <laughs> wait wait they stay persistent for a bit yo they stay for multiple turns oh man wait dag team oh that's how they work now you can expend both gauges for tag team wow I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to see their tag team. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So they have tag team mechanics. Oh. I love the yellow splash. The yellow black stuff. Dude. Okay. That's fine. Tomizawa. Ah. Honolulu, there's so much I've never. Okay. Is she like a tour guide? <clears throat> Wait, hold. Demo version, battle, sub stories, crazy delivery, cut okay. City goers, segue. Oh, wait. Okay, it's still the same uh, portion. What? <clears throat> Hold. I need to get on this segue. Whoops. Ah, okay. Yeah, she's acting as the tour guide. Oh, okay. What the... Those I like, steal guys are enemies? What beef do they have with us? We gotta do at least some we gotta do at least one mini game. This was teased. Delivery. This was teased in the trailers already. So let's take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. Now what? Rick, start off by pedaling. Okay. Now get some feet, try to pull off a trick. Crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
3 trick combo when you hit stunts in succession you start with an extreme state of mind to live through while perfect timing bro uh break near oh okay okay Wait, how do I jump? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, I have to hit right trigger too. Okay. Okay. I see. Oh, that's gonna take some time to get used to. <laughs> oh. Oh, you can hit things? Ah, uh, man. Oh, okay, so when you don't have enough speed, you... What is that? What the heck? Bonus time. Oh. I see. So that's the meter. Oh my gosh. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. We don't want to. We don't want to get too too hung up on this stuff. Excellent. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We won't do sub stories. It's a uh, house hunting. Interesting. So you're help. Okay. Oh, these are the chat boxes. So now they marked all the chat boxes. Nice. Like these are the party chat stuff that you're not quite sure where everything is in Yaksa Like a Dragon, and I didn't hear all of it. I he heard like two thirds, maybe close to like 70% of uh, messages. What is this? Oh, this is the new job switching thing. Let's get on the segue. Over to the job place. See what they have. Man. Let's just appreciate this for a moment. When you look out and the horizon. Man. Let's go have sick. Spoil brat. I can hear, uh, like English audio. Oh, I know what this is. This got teased. Dondoko. Dondoko Island. This is the. This is the sim game, the sim mode. I'm looking forward to this. It's the new management mode. Dandoko Island. Well. Hi. They really do get the open water reflections down, though. Okay. I'm hearing the chatter, like in my right ear. This is what this is about. You know, part of, uh... 
Part of the like a dragon appeal is this. Look at that beautiful draw distance. <laughs> I heard social media campaign. <clears throat> it goes way over there. Like, look, look at that. Like that stuff right there. It. It goes way over there. Like, it's so big. What the... F what the heck? Man. This definitely reminds me of, um... In a way, reminds me of my, uh... Weekend. Uh, in San Diego. Yeah, a whole different vibe, but still. Holy heck, man. You really just can get lost. Like, let me look at the size of this. I would say... It gives Ichincho a run for its money. But at the same time, this isn't the only zone. And we don't even know if this is the only location. Like, are, if there's another island or anything like that. Other than the fictional uh, Don Doko thing. Oh. Oh, they have a meter now on detection. Oh, hey, it's raining. This was advertised too. The cycling, uh, cycling of weather. Okay, but the other people don't uh, react to the rain, so that's okay. It would be kind of difficult to <laughs> to create all that interaction, but there's the rain effects. I'm curious if it suddenly rained, do people just vacate the beach or not? <laughs> oh wait. Well, there's someone who kind of looks like. Hmm. Everyone kind of looks like they're wet, though. There's that. And it goes away. Interesting. Yeah, there's a detection meter now. To tell you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice touch. All right, all right. Let, let's do one last activity. Uh, I want to know what this was. I want to know if I can rent. Here we go. Let's rent. Wait. Customize. Aw, that's cute. I don't need to charge this guy. Wait, how do I pull it out? Oh, it's LB. Oh. <laughs> Auto cruise. Auto cruise on. What, what is the difference between auto cruise and... Oh my gosh. Wait, wait, wait. What about the other guys? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in segways. That's so awesome. Okay, sorry. 
Uh, gambling hall. Is there like darts? Snap those sickos. Get on a trolley and try out snap. Okay, maybe one more spoiler, right? Or one more like activity before I get too hooked on this. So let's go and see what this is. Are we immune to detection? Yes, we are. You're gonna regret this. Or not. Alright, let's see your... What do you have? Palm tree pose? Oh, you're a yoga instructor? Let's see this. Grappling, huh? Oh, it doesn't really tell you if it's gonna hit. If they're in range of each other like even though there's a ground indicator it's difficult to know if they're in the range or not. ballroom blitz Yeah, only two of them were in target range. Oh no, never mind. Dang. There. I like the backdrop now. All of the stuff has a backdrop as well. The um, before it used to be just plain, like not as uh, upfront. So I, I do appreciate that. No follow up. What the heck? <clears throat> What's this like? It's just a punch. Yes. Wait. Oh, it's down. <laughs> it's not a show, shithead. Whoa, whoa, language. All right, one more sample, and that's it. I'm not the biggest kind of demo guy. I'm not the biggest on demos. I just do it, but. Uh, this is, I'm making a special exception, I guess. Oh no, is this the same? No, no, no. Is it this? Okay. Riding a trolley will begin a sub story and let you play the new. Okay. Let's try it. That's their coin. Probably sure are convenient. You can pretty much, you can see pretty much everything Hawaii has to offer while, whenever you're on, whenever you hop on board. If only we had some back in Japan. Uh oh. Oh, snapshotting. Oh no. We're playing Pokemon uh, Snap now. Uh oh. Okay. Sightseeing. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this to be VO, uh, VO'd at all. Did they VO sub stories? もし良かったら撮っ
トロリーに乗っていつも写真を撮っているんだこちらこそよろしくな春日ちゃんさて写真が見たいんだったなほれ見てみろ自信作ばかりだどれどれ What the heck?、Uh, of course. Of course.、Uh, pickle your pickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh, that's cute. It's like a Honolulu theme now. I mean, or like a Hawaii s theme. Chime. Oh, that's. That sounds like OnlyFans. Fushinsha Semmon Cameraman no Reni Tote. Saiko no Shimoto Basho de Wakasa. Shigoto Basho de Somoso Fushinsha no Shashin Torna de Exhibitionist, yeah. Mokarnoga. So they got Sokosoko Mokarndaya. Conoshini, Darega Canadas de Kuritur to Moo. Eh? Eto Fushinsha Mania. That is just. You work with the police? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Interesting. Uh huh. ただ写真撮るだけでどうやって簡単に言うと俺が撮った写真をもとに警察が不審者を見つけて捕まえてるか、okay. 俺がここから不審者を撮るとすぐに警察に写真データが行くようになってる I see. それをもとに不審者の場所を特定して現行犯でと捕まえてるんだ写真で決定的な瞬間を収めればそれを犯行の証拠にすることもできるし一石二鳥だまつまり俺は不審者逮捕に貢献できる尊い仕事をしてるってわけよなるほどなだから不審者ばっかり取ってたってわけかああトロリーはハワイ中を効率よく回るのに最適な乗り物だだから不審者探索にももってこいなのさまさか不審者連中もトロリーから自分たちが見られて取られてるなんて思ってもいないだろうしな結構楽しみだぜ一般人だから変なかぶり物をした不審者を探してるみたいだろ,うだろう確かにそう言われると楽しそうではあるな<笑> Make a game like that. やってみるかえ俺がカメラとかあんまり使ったことねえけどできるかな気にすることねえさ何も芸術的な写真を撮れって言ってるわけじゃねえんだかぶり物してる不審者探して見つけたら撮る基本はそれだけで OK だ小難しい技術は必要ねえただ車体はなるべく、so、gonna... なるべく真ん中で撮ることを目指すと思うそっちの方が報酬を多くもらえるからな。余裕があったら狙ってみろ。わかった。じゃあ試しに一度やってみるよ。ああ、しっかり不審者取れよ、カスガちゃん。オンレイルカメラシューティング。Well? OK? I'm capturing, try keeping it in frame as much as possible and take a. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Center, then zoom in. Keep in mind that you only earn snap for a specific. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I can't believe this is a thing. 
Oh, hey. Oh, okay. So, they did use some of the uh, motion rigging from uh, the movie one, Seagull Cinema. That that particular motion is definitely from Seagull Cinema for the Rams, the Rem Rams. Hmm. Where are you? <laughs> Wait, what's a Kamalop doing there? Dude, what the freak? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I just saw it. Really? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Dude. <laughs> Gold bun. Oh, that's an Ono. That's an Ono Michio reference. Wait, wait. There it is. Timing bonus, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh, what's, what's going on? Uh, what the? What the heck? Oh! Kamalabu! Oh my gosh. Dude, that went by really fast. <laughs> Praise be Kamalop. Alright, alright, alright. That's a good showcase. I, I got a good tease. Alright, we're gonna play this game in its entirety, and I will have all the all the pre-order and the stuff too. So we'll listen to the music and the collections and stuff, and all the fan service stuff. Weird way of saying, just do it again <laughs> and remember all the positioning. Interesting. そのポイントを現金とか物と変えられるシステムなんだけどよ。今回は特別だ。あとそうだ。これもやるよ。カメラ。こんなもらっていいのかよ。ああ、俺は同じやつ。もう一台あるからよ。遠慮しないでもらって
ゃあよろしくなカズガちゃんおう Dang. うひょーあそこ不審者がいっぱいいるふーたまんねえなママあの人は不審者よ目を合わせちゃダメ<笑><笑>あ、oh, I hope、uh, I hope all the sub stories get the TLC like maybe they're going bigger and better and all the sub stories get TLC too that's awesome all right I, I'm not gonna like、uh, peruse and I, I'm probably gonna do the same when the game comes out we got you know I got all of December to kind of sober up a little you know it game runs well as per usual Dragon engine, right? All reliable, very reliable. Well, there's our、uh, first little, you know, tiny look. I, again, I'm not the I'm not the kind of guy that really d o too much demoing or trialing. I, I'm very,、um, when I select something and do something, I like to be committed to the, the product on hand. And it's, it's great. It's, it's, Pretty clear that they、uh, wear their pride on their sleeves and、uh, you, they don't really have to convince me otherwise. Right? So, January 26th.、Oh, that's a good taste of. I really dig it. I love the UI look, man. It's just so fantastic to see that they went from something. I have no idea what the early UI designs are. <laughs> Well, for legacy players, they will appreciate it. it it's wonderful. I, it, it's such a treat to look at it. And I love the yellow, black. I mean, some people would think that yellow and black, there's that particular yellow and black, might, might be a little something else. But, you know. Wonderful. Nice. I love it. All right. So we'll be back. Be doing the. I, I see it's version 0.0.9. That's kind of funny. um Yeah, so. This will be off in January 26th. We'll be back to complete the、uh, Like a Dragon Guide Den with all the fun stuff then.、Uh, what I mean is mini games, management, all that stuff、uh, next time. Alright, folks. As always, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening if you're here. If you're gonna watch this later, thanks for watching. As always, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, work on that net positive lifestyle, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye now.